this year. Yet come title time, he's chasing the familiar number three once again. Mark Martin is third in the points. He must win races now to be a contender for the title. The stretch drive for the Winston Cup begins tonight on TBS under the lights in Richmond. Welcome to Richmond International Raceway for the Miller Genuine Draft 400 under the lights indeed tonight. It's been a wet night in Richmond so far. In fact, we've been rain delayed for oh, about 90 minutes or so, but in just a short time, 38 Winston Cup drivers will be ready to take the green flag and get down to action for you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. Welcome to the STP Pit Communication Center. Lots of stories to tell you about tonight here at Richmond. Of course, the battle for the point title. Who's going to emerge victorious in this event, which has been a Rusty Wallace show the last couple of years? Hard to say, but there are a lot of great race cars and fine race drivers here. Joining us tonight on Pit Road to tell us more about some of the contenders for victory tonight from Stock Car Racing Magazine, Dr. Dick Bergeron. Well, Bill Elliott won the last race on the series, the Southern 500 at Darlington, and he's brought the same car here to Richmond that he won with. But Elliott's got a problem. He developed an infection on his forehead. The infection was so bad, yesterday he missed all of practice and qualifying. He did practice the car this morning. He's here tonight with a big bandage on that forehead and a big lump underneath it. He is going to start the race. The question is, can he finish it? Working pit road with me tonight is Randy Pemberton. Thank you, Dick. Just a few statistics on Dale Earnhardt. He has not won in 15 straight Winston Cup races, but over the last 11, he has been solid. He has four second-place finishes, three-thirds, a fifth, a seventh. Only two times has he run outside the top 10 in the last 11 starts. But Rusty Wallace is also running very well, and he's on his heels for the chase for the Winston Cup championship. For more on that, let's go up to the man that will call the action tonight, Ken Squire. Indeed, Rusty Wallace is a major story here. Two firsts and two seconds in his last four appearances at Richmond International Raceway. But more important, with eight races left on the season, including tonight, he is just 57 points better than he was a year ago at this time. That's all good news. Bad news is he's 227 points away from Dale Earnhardt. And unless something catastrophic happens to Earnhardt or his car, it looks like Dale's on his way to his seventh Winston Cup championship. But there's a lot of other great stories here tonight. And alongside is Chuck Bound, injured at Pocono, Pennsylvania, on the men. Glad to have you with us. Let's talk about some of those other stories. Well, you know, Dale and Rusty might be the headliners tonight, but I know 35 other guys out there that want to win. And they're hungry. It's late in the season. They're trying to make their deals for next year. So it's going to be a heck of a race. Let's take a look at just who the people are who'll start this 38-car field as we take a look at the Haviland starting grid. On the pole with a new record. Second time he's set on the pole, both times at Richmond. It's Ted Musgrave. Alongside is Hutt Strickland. He also broke the old record at 123.8. Great run for Hutt. Starting the inside of row two, it's the Labonte row. There's Terry Labonte on the bottom in his Chevrolet. And on the outside, Bobby Labonte. Getting back to row number three, and there you find the guy, the defending champion. One, two, second, another two, Rusty Wallace. And Greg Sachs, the first man on Hoosiers, on the outside of that row three. Row four tonight, Bobby Hamilton, who got his career going to the Grand National win here on the inside. And alongside Steve Grissom with his best qualifying mark to date in Winston Cup racing. For row five, there's Jeff Bodine. And outside of Jeff, as we settle down for this start, will be Ken Schrader in another Rick Hendrick car. Row six tonight is Rick Mass. Alongside is Dale Earnhardt. Row seven, Jeff Gordon's there with Mark Martin. Getting into row eight, there you find Ward Burton and Todd Bodine. Row nine for tonight, Kenny Wallace and Derek Cope. In row 10 is John Andretti, and he's in that Richard Petty car again tonight, as he will be at Dover next week. Michael Walcott there, too. Marlon and Spencer on the in the row 11 area. Row 12 for tonight, it's Marcus and Jarrett. Row 13, Petty and Bodine. The field gets ready to roll. Row 14 is Mike Waltrip and uh, Mike Wallace and Daryl Waltrip. Row 15, Morgan Shepard. And Harry Gant has had to go to a backup car. He crashed earlier today, so he'll take the backup automobile to the back of the field. Dick Trickle and Joe Nebachek are in row 16. Row 17 is Ricky Rudd. And Loy Allen makes his first start on a short track this evening here at Richmond. 
So row 18 for tonight is Jeff Green, and there's Jeremy Mayfield. And row 19 is Lake Speed and Bill Elliott. That's a provisional start for Elliott. He gets it as a former Winston Cup champion. We'll be back to show you the start in a moment. Stay with us at Richmond International Raceway for the Miller Genuine Draft 400. Genuine draft for us to want a stock car. See it. Hear it. Volkswagen Jetta GLX was built for the Audubon, where people go 130 miles an hour. You, however, cannot. If you could, it would look a lot like this. And a little like this. Oh, so it's my fault. I didn't say that. Well, then what do you say? You don't listen. You never change. The new Volkswagen Jetta has an adaptive automatic transmission. It senses the way you drive and adjusts to fit your personality. Maybe you are. Maybe I'm not. It's a shame we only make cars. You have car insurance, right? Well, your engine is the most expensive part of your car. So, have you insured your engine? Right. Engine insurance, also known as T-plus engine treatment with DuPont Teflon. Add T-plus and tough DuPont Teflon goes to work relentlessly fighting heat, friction and wear, protecting your engine for up to 50,000 miles. T-plus engine treatment. The T is for Teflon. Tough, tenacious, tested. When I played basketball, I always wanted the ball. And I got it where it should go. And I always drank Gatorade, because nothing's better. Now I'm playing baseball. I still drink Gatorade. I still want the ball. I still know where it should go. And sooner or later, I'm going to get it there. I hope. It's got to be Gatorade. Robert E. Lee looking over Richmond. 72,000 looking over the Richmond International Raceway. Sold out for months. Everybody wants to get into this racetrack, and for good reason. You don't see better racing than you do here in Virginia on this facility. It's banked 14 degrees in the corners. It's 8 degrees at the start-finish line. It's just about the perfect track. It has all the feel of a super speedway, and yet it gives you all that fender to fender in your door confrontational stuff that you expect on a Saturday night, Chuck Bound. Well, that's true, Ken. It's got a little bit of everything, Richmond. Uh, one unique thing about it, for only 14 degrees of banking, it has an extremely good second group. And with a little bit of luck tonight, we're going to see a whole lot of side-to-side -side racing. And I don't mean just for a moment. I mean for four, five, and six-lap little jumps, and it should be exciting. Update on track conditions. Randy Pemberton. Well, Dale Earnhardt has radio to his crew. Said it is a little bit wet coming off of turn four as well as going into turn one. All other areas are A-OK -okay as far as Earnhardt is concerned. They're going to drop the cars down uh, deep into the bottom going into one here. Try and get that uh, dried up. It looks pretty good to me, though. Well, actually, from up here, you can see it. It is darker down on the inside as you come out of four and as you go into one. Now, remember, as you watch this racetrack, you see there it is, a D-shaped oval. And you see the banking there, that backstretch hardly banked at all. The key here is that that third turn is where you really have to nip them. You can really get in there a little too tight. You have to be so careful. The D shape is going into number one, and you fly down in there, what, 135, 140 miles an hour? I'd say at least 140, because the pole speed, I think, is around 124. And you actually uh, not only let off the throttle here, you get on the brake quite a bit to slow down to get through the center of these corners. The top speed down those straightaways is moving right along. They were talking about that in that shopping show, about how you really see the brakes heat up on this track. And, well, yeah, I think less so uh, today than a few years ago, but if the car's not handling well, you'll still see some red brakes. But I think the guys that uh, really know what they're doing and really get them working good can float them through the middle of that corner and get away with a little less brake, especially as cool as it is tonight. And, uh, I hope brakes won't be an issue. Let's take a look at what comprises the field tonight. There you see five Pontiacs, 13 Chevys, 20 Fords. 
as the uh, battle among the manufacturer and Mace continues in Winston Cup racing this year. Ford's having a pretty good year. Full house standing by to watch this one. Now, these preliminary are none counting laps. These are none counting laps. Ford has 16 wins this year. Chevrolet has rung the bell seven times. Pontiac had uh, five wins with Wallace last year alone, and Pontiac really misses Wallace since he switched over to that Ford Thunderbird. Take a look at those manufacturer points at the present time, and that Chevrolet of Earnhardt keeps chugging away out there, but it looks like Ford may be on its way to its second championship in the modern era, which goes back to 1972. Let's take a look at the onboard cameras, and uh, here you are with Jeremy Mayfield out back. You're tailing the field pretty much here with Jeremy Mayfield in the Kill Yarborough car, the Finger Hut car. And here's Rusty Wallace looking him over. Remember, he is on the inside of row three, fifth position. Outside of him is Greg Sachs. Here's Mark Martin settling down. They say five laps before they turn them loose tonight. Mark Martin back in 14th position. And there's Jeff Bodine, ready to go, looking for win number three from the ninth starting position. He, too, on Hoosier uh, tires. Well, yeah, it's going to be an interesting race to see between Goodyear and Hoosier, again, like it has been every week. Uh, Hoosier's really been doing their homework and catching up and making Goodyear work hard, but Goodyear still has the numbers out there. There's no question about that. Now let's talk about the man on the pole for just a moment, Ted Musgrave. Musgrave in that car has had his best finish of a second. He's on the pole at 124.052. The only thing that ever went faster was Bob Stefanik in a modified at about 125. But you can be sure Musgrave will be on the throttle in a moment. Showing on Paragon Cable's Choice Access, three new channels. Flicks with hit movies from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, commercial free. I love it, dear. I love every second of it. Comedy Central with Stand Up, Kids in the Hall, and Roger. Now, I have a job. I'm the presidential brother. But not everyone can do that. And see all your hilarious favorites on the Cartoon Network. Yeah, but da ba do Get all three channels for $1.95 a month and get a free universal remote. Ain't that a doozy? Jam. Can you dig it? Big hits. Big plays. Big time emotions. Dig in for the best of the SWC. New Mexico and SMU. Saturday at 1. Live on Sunshine. Light is off on the pace car. Doyle Ford has green flag in hand. This time will get a start when they come down out of turn four. A report on Harry Gant's car from Dick Berger who is running his last race here, Ken, has just radioed to his crew saying potential drive shaft problems. He has not taken a single lap in this backup car so far, and there is a vibration in the rear end. Pace car about to come in, ready for a start. Musgrave, Strickland, front row, the Bobby brothers coming down in row two. Wallace and Sack, row three. Hamilton squares off against Grissom, row four. Bodine and Schrader, row five. We have green. There was a bit of a slow up at the back. Got one car down. It's 28. Kenny Wallace. Yellow is out. Kenny Wallace down just off the bottom side of turn two as he came down through there. Kenny Wallace looping the Robert Gates car. Yellow is out after one lap. Back to the strike. First time Hutt Strickland has led this year is right now as he comes to the line. In fact, the last time that Hutt Strickland led, that was June 93 back at Michigan. Hutt Strickland out in front with a Travis Carter car as we go to caution for car number 28. Hi, 
I'm Joy Mangano, and I invented the Miracle Mop. It's the original cotton self-wringing mop, therefore the most absorbent. It will clean that mess again and again and again. And I'm Jane Rudolph Tracy, host on QVC, where we have sold over 300,000 mops to people all across the country just like you. In fact, let's hear from some of them. Hi, you're on the air. I love your mop. It's, it's been a lifesaver. This mop is wonderful. I, I would tell anybody to buy it. You can take it into the bathtub, up the shower stall, behind the commode. And after all that messy cleaning, this is the only mop of its kind, you're so smart, <laughs> that you can put into the washing machine with bleach and it comes out germ-free. I can't say enough about them. They're wonderful. It cuts my time in half. And if you call right now, you'll also get a tube of Simple Green. Why don't you give us a call? Our operators are standing by. Have your credit card ready and call now, toll-free. 1-800-500-7564. Miracle Mop is guaranteed to be the last mop you'll ever have to buy. Call 1-800-500-7564. The Miami Hurricanes. Nobody plays better than they do. And nobody but nobody covers the Canes better than Canesport. 21 times a year, Canesport takes you inside the locker room and inside the coaches' minds for the most comprehensive coverage anywhere. Each issue brings you complete game analysis, exciting action photos, and more. To order Canesport, call 1-800-635-CANE. Or by mail, send 3195 to Canesport, Miami, Florida. Canesport. Don't miss an issue. Order now. Pace cars in. We're back under green. And on the jump, Hutt Strickland looking really strong. Nose is out in front. Musgrave for the moment stays in second. Here comes Labonte after him for third. For second. And here's Jeff Wodine under sacks. Look at Terry Labonte working on the bottom and taking over in second spot and Wallace that inside hole on board with Rusty Wallace working lap six well dying breaking through for him or rather Labonte breaking through for him here's Hamilton in the number 40 scooting to the bottom yeah Bobby's looking pretty racy too he's uh this car is wanting good he wants to get up there and mix it up with that lead too but Terry's gonna take a look here Terry Labonte on the bottom side, car number five, goes after Strickland, bags him. This is in lap seven. Wallace flies third, Hamilton fourth, Musgrave falls back to fifth, Bobby Labonte in sixth. Well, I think they've been able to run just enough laps now to kind of sense what the track is, and what kind of car they have, and how it's going to work. And now they can get down to business and uh, work their way to the front. Here comes the three on the inside, working for eight. Greg Sachs in the 77 under some pressure. Jeff Gordon coming along. Earnhardt picking his way through. Now looks to the outside. Cuts back for the bottom of the racetrack. Coming down to turn three where you can really pinch him. And Earnhardt works his way into the bottom line. Sacks know he's there. Well, that might be rubbing here pretty soon. <laughs> good pretty old Richmond. Soon. Good old Richmond <laughs> racing. Bernhardt shoots up through the inside, and he has sacks. Here's a battle for fourth. Hamilton under Wallace. Wallace, who's won this race the last two times and had second in that Pontiac Excitement 400 in the spring. Still even. Look at Hamilton. He had to take an extra cut going into turn number one. They were definitely doing, doing a little wiggling and entering, entering the first turn there. Uh, they're going at it pretty hard for so early in the race. 140 miles an hour down into that first turn of this three-quarter mile track. Richmond International Raceway. Race delayed an hour and a half by rain. Now underway. Battle is up here. It's car number 23, Strickland, in second place. Bobby Hamilton trying to chase him down in the number 40. And Wallace right there with him. Bobby's making a move. He's in that second position, it looks like. And then we'll see if he can do anything with Terry Labonte. He's definitely running fast right now. Boy, Bobby Hamilton. Remember when he won that Grand National Race back here in 91? Yeah, it really sure. got his career <laughs> underway. You raced against yeah, him. Yeah, I was one of them he beat. <laughs> I remember that well. Hamilton on Hoosier and looking good. Here's yeah, Rusty Wallace getting around Strickland. On 
on board from Wallace's view out the back. One quick caution as we are underway as Kenny Wallace got it around the heavy braking. Here's 22 and 16 in a war. That's fifth place, Musgrave in the 16 on the bottom. And trying the high side is Bobby Labonte. Very long to move to the outside and see what they can do out there. And it looks like it's going to come in pretty fast. As it Up from nine here, Richard. Comes Jeff Bodine. He's in seven. Car number seven. And right behind him, from 12, comes Earnhardt. Boy, look at this jam session. Talk about some tight racing. Jeff Gordon wants to mix it up. Rick Mast is in there, the pole sitter at Indianapolis this year. It all started out as a battle for fifth between two guys, Musgrave and Levante. They collected some friends. I think what happens, the front two cars got to run side to side. It was just about two tenths of lap. That's not much, but that's all those others. Real and righty, and get right in the thick of it. Put on a good show. This battle, three tenths of a second back from the leader. Leader continues to be Terry Labonte. Lap 15 complete. And look at this picture. As you see on the outside, Jeff Gordon carefully deploying that 24 and moving through the field. That's up on the seven car. Trying to get around him on the outside as they come down into turn number one. Almost three wide. Bobby Labonte looking good in the 22. Gordon goes high. Here comes Earnhardt. Found that hole on the inside. That was a good little camera angle there. Nice little block by Gordon. <laughs> Doing what he has to do to stay up there. Knows he has Earnhardt behind him. He tries to contain him. From Bodine. Looking over. This is still that fifth place squabble. <laughs> It's a hard one to get off on the outside. On turn four, you can get a little better run up off that off that corner on the front straightaway with that arch. But, uh, they're going at it pretty good here. They're pretty equal. I'm not sure who's going to win out of this deal. Looks like Jeff has the edge right now, but I'm not sure Bobby's done. Yeah, he's going to tuck down behind him, I guess. Bodine, fifth. Bobby Labonte, back to six. Seven. The 24 scoots to the inside. Gordon finds a hole. He's there. And Earnhardt looks him over. Now Earnhardt tries the outside. Here's Earnhardt trying to stack him up three wide. He'll settle for two, and he'll move under Bobby Labonte if he can. Moving pick out there, and Gordon for Earnhardt. Now Earnhardt slides back in. Here's Randy with an update on Earnhardt's car. Well, for pit road, folks, you can see the brake rotors blowing on these cars already. The first one to point it out to the driver was crew chief Andy Petrie for Dale he radioed to him. He said, Dale, easy on the brakes. They're already red hot. Dale said, I hear you. So that's it. But uh, we'll try to get a closer look on that on camera early, uh, later on tonight. But they do blow here at night. You know, a lot of the drivers, and I believe Dale, one of them, break with the left foot. And when you're in that heavy traffic, really racing hard like he was, you, you sometimes uh, accidentally ride that brake. And you need to be reminded by your team that, uh, you know, they're getting hot. You can quit riding it. Sometimes that'll get rid of that orange glow in a hurry. Take a look at Earnhardt trying to work his way around car number 22, Bobby Labonte. Bobby giving that car a tremendous ride. And there take, for the moment, is your leader. It was Terry Labonte in the five, staying in front. This is lap 24 complete, coming to the strike.
Okay. Yeah. new series from the genius of Ken Burns, now available in a deluxe classic edition only by calling Ken Burns Baseball. Preview the first cassette, a national heirloom, 10 days free of charge. If you like it, keep it for just $4.95 plus shipping and handling. Other cassettes will be sent to you one every six weeks, each on the same free trial basis. And call now to find out how to get the companion book, Baseball and Illustrated History, absolutely free. So call 1-800-842-9800 and bring baseball home. On board with Mark Martin. Looks at Bobby Labonte. Tries to hook it up to get underneath. <laughs> uh, he's walked by. You know, everybody. I don't know if uh, Bobby's starting to change just a little bit. Maybe his car's not quite exactly what he wanted it to be when the race started. But uh, there's a long way to go. There'll be pit stops. And then they'll be able to make some adjustments. I would imagine that first pit stop, a lot of them will be making adjustments because they're guessing what they're, what they're going to need today. an update on Kyle Petty's number 42 from Rick Benjamin. Ken, it sounds like there's problems in the 42 automobile tonight. Kyle has told his crew he's lost an oil pump belt. At least he thinks that's what's wrong with the car. Looks like he's going to be heading pitward in just a moment. We're told now he's headed to the back garage area with the 42 with the mellow yellow Pontiac. So Kyle Petty out of the action, at least at the moment. Got one car in the wall, and it's torn off a tire, I believe, on car number 98. Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy Mayfield, who started out back, has hit the wall, and he punched it hard. Jeremy Mayfield slamming into the third turn wall. Second caution tonight. This is at lap 31. And the back of 95 is uh, showing some damage as well as it comes down. Jeff Green. Looks like he's got a flat right front tire. Jeremy was moving around in there. Looked like he was trying to get it going, but I think the car hit hard enough that I don't know. I don't think he's going to be able to drive it into the fence. Oh, that's unfortunate for Jeremy, who's moved over to that Cale Yarborough team. Here they he's come. Getting himself out of that thing. On the, the front, of the, front of the field coming down onto pit road. This is probably a blessing for all these teams, uh, not for Jeremy and, and uh, the 95 car, but for all these guys that get to come in early and make an adjustment now that they kind of know what they have and get prepared for the next little jaunt here. The track was washed off, heavy shower came, and the temperature dropped dramatically. Yeah, it really Seven did. degrees, first and second place fit. We you see on the top, the number five, Joe Labonte on the bottom, Bobby Hamilton. And Rusty Wallace is on the pit road already. Buddy the Parrott race. and company, they've done it again. There comes Labonte out, Hamilton, Jeff Gordon. Looks like pit road is just a little bit slippery as they hit the end of the pit there. They're sliding around a little bit. We'll take a commercial break and be back to Richmond International Raceway. Second caution of the night in the Miller Genuine Draft 400. Mayfield hard in the wall. He's okay. If you have a thinning hair problem, this Hollywood makeup artist has the answer. On the set of Miami Vice, or on feature films like Sniper, I always take along top coverage. It's the original one-step hair thickener that we've used in show business for over 20 years. Top coverage works on men and women by adhering to the hair and scalp, increasing overall thickness. It's quick drying and guaranteed not to come off on clothing, fingers, or pillows. It's even waterproof, yet it washes off easily with shampoo. I don't have to be bald anymore, it's great. You just spray it on, and you go. Top coverage is fantastic. A 30-day supply is yours for just $19.95. Call now and you'll also get this special shampoo for thinning hair free. That's more than a $25 value for just $19.95. You even get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Operators are standing by to help with your color selection, so call now. Try top coverage risk-free for 30 days. Call 1-800-352-2121. That's 1-800-352-2121. Call now. My grandfather was already an old man the first time I went fishing with him. 
my dad whispered. Watch him cast. And I watched that line go out like a soaring bird. Where'd he learn to do that, I asked. From his father, my dad said. And from field and stream. And so it's been since 1895, when Field and Stream was first published. And now you can continue the tradition with this special TV offer. Call now and get 15 issues of the best in hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation. Plus special news specifically for your area, all for this great price. Order now and you'll also get this great-looking heavy-duty Field and Stream field bag. Just the other day, I took my boy fishing for the first time. Call this number now for a great price on Field and Stream and get this roomy, sturdy field bag free with your paid subscription. Call now. Well, after the uh, stop on Pitt Road, there you see the top six. Rusty Wallace, who went in third, comes out in the lead. Labonte finds himself back in second. Bobby Hamilton now in third. Then Gordon Strickland Bodine in the top six. That's with 33 complete. And we can give you a bit of a replay as to what happened to Jeremy Mayfield was just the end of it as he gets a big piece of the wall in car number 98 takes the front and rear end yeah the, you know the 95 had a flat tire at the same time so i have no idea if the two got together or exactly what happened but uh, there's a big problem for the 98 car they probably could be done for the we placed a Derek Cope in that ride and uh, that's only his seventh time out hard knock in the wall let's go down to pit road in the number 28 car is having his problems for sure. The toe in is knocked out by about a half an inch, Ken, and he's already made a couple of stops. Planning on doing some more. The whole crew is on the wall here. They've got jack stands in hand. That usually means it's going to be a few minutes, not a few seconds, for the pit stop. So there's the story on uh, to uh, the, the latest on that Kenny Wallace incident when he spun on the very first lap. Now let's go to the STP Pit Center. Here's Rick Benjamin. Well, thanks, Ken. We're joined by Governor George Allen of the state of Virginia. Governor, good to have you with us again it's, this year. It's great to be here, and it's great to have you all here. Well, we appreciate the opportunity. You've been very active trying to promote tourism in the state of Virginia. Right. How important is this race? Oh, this is, this is the largest gathering for any reason, sports or otherwise, in the history of Virginia. We broke the record last in the spring race, and now uh, the Sawyers have added even more uh, seats on here at the Richmond International Raceway. I, I told Mr. Sawyer, if you, if you put a old milking stool here, they could sell that. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> packed. The weather uh, hasn't had any impact other than slowing down the specific start of the race. Have we made you a Winston Cup race fan yet? Oh, yeah, I always have been. I've always very much enjoyed it. These race fans that come into Virginia or any place that there's a race, it's just great for our local economy, the hotels, the restaurants, the re gas stations. And they're, and they're good folks, too. And, and we in Virginia obviously think a great deal of racing. We have our own race car, Virginia's for Lovers race car. Sure. runs on the Grand National uh, circuit, and uh, we're doing very well. And so Virginia's for Lovers as well as race fans. Well, congratulations, Governor, on a great turnout tonight. We wish you well the rest of your term in office. Well, Actually, thank you so much. Governor George Allen with us tonight. The leaders have been very busy on pit road. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, as far as up at this end of pit road, we have Dale Earnhardt as well as Ted Musgrave and Terry Labonte. Earnhardt was complaining about pushing, coming off the corner, so they took a round of bike out of that car, hoping to correct that problem. Uh, Ted Musgrave, not a good pit stop there. They had the jack fall on that car, so he lost several spots. He was 10th. He's back now about 14th or 15th. Terry Labonte had a flawless pit stop. He's back out the way. So other than that, that's it. Dick Berger? At the other end of things, it couldn't have gone better for Rusty Wallace. They had a pit stop of around 17 seconds. Wallace for four tires and a full load of fuel. The tires they took off looked real good. Right next to him, Hot Strickland also did a four-tire change, a good fast four-tire change. No problems there either. They're in the front of the pack as a result. Volley back at the present time in the race. We have 38 laps complete. The car that's set on the pole now finds himself back in uh, 14th position. Ted Musgrave sliding back through the field made a real good start, but it isn't staying up tonight for Musgrave. It's falling back at the present time. He's got some work to do. Well, he might be all right. They say it was a little bit of a jack problem on the uh, pit stop, and that cost him some positions on the racetrack, but you know, Ken, that uh, governor looked awfully young, or am I just getting older? What's the deal here? <laughs> now Virginia's for love. And this uh, state of Virginia, 72,000, they've added about six or 8,000 seats to this 
Richmond International Raceway for every season. Those are the seats. That doesn't include the suites. And keep adding those as well. Now, they'll be up to 100,000 here in a few more years. No question about it. Another great throng out tonight to enjoy this race. And an incredible crowd last night on Friday night to see Kenny Wallace uh, win that race over Mark Martin. Great Grand National Battle. Elliott's come from 38th to 22nd as we're one lap away from the start. And as they get ready to go, it will be Rusty Wallace first, Terry Labonte second, Hamilton, followed by Gordon, Hut Strickland. Then comes Jeff Bodine sixth, Mark Martin seventh, Earnhardt, Rick Mass ninth. And you'll have Bobby Labonte tenth, Grissom in 11th, Schrader, Todd Bodine 13th, Musgrave 14th. Greg Sachs 15th as we get ready for a go. By now, everyone knows that Marine Surplus has just about any part or accessory for your boat, no matter how big or small. And everyone knows that Marine Surplus has over 21,000 square feet of boating supplies in stock. But did you know that Marine Surplus has been in business for over 10 years and in that time has acquired a knowledgeable, experienced staff who can help you find just what you're looking for or provide tips on making installation easier. So when you're looking for a part and maybe some helpful advice, think of the friendly people at Marine Surplus. Jam. Can you dig it? Big hits. Big play. Big time emotion. Dig in for the best of the SWC. New Mexico and SMU. Saturday at 1. Live on Sunshine. Green coming back out at 41. Bobby Hamilton doing a good job on that number 40. And look at Mark Martin making up time. Earnhardt right with him. Down to the inside comes Jeff Bodine. Puts it right and stay dry in the bottom of the track as he tries to find a little running room. Here comes Earnhardt. Earnhardt to the outside. Earnhardt trying to pull by. Bodine staying right with him and low on the track. Black car, Kenny Wallace just in front. Look at this lead battle. Rusty Wallace on the high side, down on the bottom. Terry Labonte. Bobby Hamilton to try to go right with him. Terry Labonte back in the lead, and here comes Bobby Hamilton for second place. Watching it live on TBS, Richmond International Raceways, where it's happening tonight. At 45, now complete, of 400 to be run. As we watch Bobby Hamilton try to hang on and chase down Terry Labonte, who's run up front. Word is that on that pit stop, the Hoosier tires they took off the car were blistered. He's got new skins. He's going for the lead. Hamilton nearly colliding with car number five. And Labonte wisely gave him a little room, and Bobby shoots down the inside and takes first place. Terry Labonte in second. Rusty Wallace is in third. It's Gordon in fourth. Further back in fifth, Strickland, Earnhardt, and look at Earnhardt work the bottom of that racetrack. Gosh, is that car look good. It's pretty strong. Pleasure to watch. I understand that's a brand new car they've got here tonight. I think uh, they've been pretty happy with it so far in practice. Right now, it looks like it's getting the job done pretty good. He's on the move. Strickland, who started outside of the front row, now under challenge from Bodine. And Bodine marches down to the bottom, and he's riding wheel to wheel down the main straightaway. Riding about 140 miles an hour into turn number one. Give 
give it to since. Take a look at this screen. 22. Grissom in the 29. Take a look at the Napa field standings early in the going. We've completed 50 on the track for you. Take a look at the Napa standings back to the field for all of your favorites. As Grissom in the 29 pulls up on Bobby Labonte in 22. If you're new to racing, this took Grissom out of Gadsden, Alabama. Did a grand job in Grand National. Moved up into Winston Cup in four races this year. Of the 23 that have been running prior to tonight, he's been the top rookie finisher. Now look at Brett Bodine in the 26, fighting with pole sitter Musgrave. Man at seven the pole. Back again, Mark Martin and Strickland in another war. At seventh place at stake. And Martin like, has it this time. Looks like he's finally cleared him. He's able to pull over to that outside wall and get a better end to the third turn. He should be able to pull away now. Maybe see if he can get up there to kill. I believe Bernard's trying to reel in that first uh, first group of cars. It uh, should be getting pretty interesting for the lead here pretty quick, I hope. Up in front, Bobby Hamilton shows the way. Coming around for 54. Here is your leader Hamilton. Followed by Labonte. And you can see just behind Jeff Gordon in fourth. Here comes Earnhardt. As he said, Jeff, he is trailing those guys in. Bobby Hamilton stays first. Best career finish was in 91. He had a six at Rockingham back when he was a rookie campaign in Winston Racing. So the front five gather it up. Here's 17 and 10 at it another time. Waltrip on the outside of Ricky Rush. 19th position there. Earnhardt moving ever closer up in front on Gordon at this time. If we watch this battle a little further back. And you see just behind them, number 11. Here's Elliott from 38. He's up to 21st. Steadily picking him off. Ricky Rudd, number 10, wanted to do well tonight for Landon, Landon Lee. Landon's three weeks old now. He took the green flag at eight pounds, three ounces. <laughs> Landon's home watching tonight. He didn't feel he wanted to go to the show. He's catching it on WTV, yeah, isn't he? That's right. <laughs> Congratulations to two wonderful people, Ricky Rudd and Landon, Landon Lee. Here's Ricky down to the bottom. He will not let go of Walter. Rick Benjamin standing by with Jeremy Mayfield. Again in the SCP Big Communications Center, Jeremy Mayfield, one of the early retirees. You whacked the wall a ton. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You know, I hate it for uh, all the people at Finger Hut. You know, really felt like we had a good run going. Uh, we come up a little short in qualifying. I felt like we had a good car, and this came up short tonight. This is an opportunity for you. You've just moved into the Kaylee Arbroke car several weeks ago. How do you like it so far? So far, things are going good. You know, uh, like I said, we messed up a little bit in qualifying here. Really felt like we had a good race car, better than what we were showing, and uh, just kind of biding our time. And things just got fun to be getting into three over there. And put it in the wall and I tell you for all people I'm saying, right? All right, wish you luck in the future. Jeremy Mayfield, the driver who Kelly Arbro says has a ton of raw talent. Said he just couldn't let him go. Thank really you. made a fight for him and um, could end up in a court suit. T.W. Taylor very unhappy about losing him. Greg Sachs losing 18th position. Sliding back as Walter takes the high side and Ricky Rudd comes with him. And Elliott looking them over. What a run Elliott's made from the rear in the Junior Johnson car. More from the Miller Genuine Draft 400 after this.
sport that grew up with the nation. Baseball. The remarkable new series from the genius of Ken Burns, now available in a deluxe classic edition only by calling Ken Burns Baseball. Preview the first cassette, a national heirloom, 10 days free of charge. If you like it, keep it for just $4.95 plus shipping and handling. Other cassettes will be sent to you one every six weeks, each on the same free trial basis. And call now to find out how to get the companion book, Baseball and Illustrated History, absolutely free. So call 1-800-842-9800 and bring baseball home. Hi folks, I'm Channel 9's Pat Clark. And I'm Paul A. Zinger, asking you to join us September 19th at Lake Nona for Guest Watch's Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. You'll get a chance to rub elbows with guys like Paul, Jack Nicholas, Payne Stewart, Nick Price, and many other world-class pros. And we're playing for more than just the lowest score. We're raising money for Leukemia Society Lymphoma Research Program. So join us here at Lake Nona on September 19th for the Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. Where else can you see guys like this doing what they do best and help lymphoma research? Call Ticketmaster at 407-839-3900. Rusty Wallace is Earnhardt laying back. No, he's not crazy. He's running hard. He's running as hard as he can get a Chevrolet to run. How hard are you running your car? I'm running as hard as I can get that board to run. I guess they're running hard. Here's Earnhardt. Is there any other way to do it? <laughs> no other way. Take a look at this. As Grissom works his way. He's in 13th. Bodine, Labonte. Lead battle beginning to shape up. Hamilton coming after Terry Labonte. I think Terry just slipped by uh, Hamilton again. Uh, Hamilton slipped by Terry earlier on the restart and pulled away a little bit, but then they kind of leveled out. Terry reeled him back in and just uh, slipped on by him. So I don't know if this is a tire situation or a chassis situation, but. Uh, Bobby strong in the short run. Terry is a little stronger in the long run. 13th position here. The 22 and the 26 at it. That's Brett Bodine down on the bottom. Musgrave mustering some more power and getting back into this scrap. Remember, he's fallen back from the pole. And the 43 is getting up into this. Here comes John Andretti. He's got one more ride. We believe that Dover with Petty. Nothing has been secured about that ride yet, but what a combination of names. Petty and Andretti together on this car number 43. John's giving it a good ride tonight. With more on the 43 car, here's with Benjamin. Well, Ken, we understood earlier from one of the STP team's key representatives that both Richard Petty and John Andretti are in hard negotiations about next year, and they're hoping to work out a deal this week. So it looks as though Andretti may have Leaders. found a permanent spot in that car. Second place changing quickly as Earnhardt gets under the 40, puts Hamilton away, and drives off. That car is just amazing. That number three, when it's right, it's dead on. It looks like Bobby Hamilton, or rather uh, Kenny Wallace last night. Now here's Bobby Hamilton fading high and Rusty Wallace getting down to the bottom, trying to make up some ground. And yeah, Gordon's gonna follow right on through. It looks like the 40 car is giving up a little bit. I don't know if it's chassis or tires, but it's uh, starting to back up some. Gives up two spots, moves back to fifth. Closing. Earnhardt. Labonte for first place. 71 complete. Two cautions thus far in the event. Richmond International Raceway as from 12th position, Dale Earnhardt has moved his way up to second. Look at this fight. Grissom down to the inside on Rick Mass. And he's away and clear. We'll hear a lot more. That number one of Mass was in 12th. Gave, gave it up. Grissom moving in, and here's 75 right in front of him. Todd Bodine. Yeah, it looks like Terry Labonte's finally caught the, the rear end of the field. He's starting to have to lap some cars. It took a long time. These cars just aren't running that much different speeds. Bobby Hamilton coming in off the pace. I guess you call that one right, Chuck. Yeah, I believe he's going to be looking for some tires. Didn't we hear... Uh, Dick or Randy talk about a blister tire on that first little short run that we had. Uh, boy, that could be a long night if that's the case. And Michael Waltrip, who's been running 29th, he's pitted at about the same time. And 
come back on the track. Michael Walsh with him. This is at lap 73. Here's Randy. Well, absolutely four tires. He documented the fact that he had blistered tires on the very first pit stop. He's run just about 35 laps. The right side tire is already on. The jack goes around to the left side. It has been a concern all season long. Jeff Bodon has been able to make the Hoosiers work. Nobody else has been able to make them work consistently. And he's down in the way on the 40 car. 20.9. Not a bad pit stop, but he is a lap down at least. So Kenny Wallace will lap down, and now Bobby Hamilton suffers the same fate. Lavani and Earnhardt spurring off up front. 75 laps complete. You know, Rusty was uh, fortunate enough to have a super fast pit stop, and he already got to lead this race and get his bonus points. I'm sure Dale's probably looking for those five more points. You know, to Terry. But he's got a work cut out. Terry's running pretty good. Number 30, a new rubber on, trying to go up and challenge. Takes oh. a very high line. Whoops. I'm not sure if he just got in a little hard there, got up into the marbles, and it just kind of went for a long slide. I'm sure he'll get the right front tire cleaned up and, and come back to running fast here in a minute. But uh, that didn't work too good down there. That's a deep breath. I mean, he's still got a handful. He had to take a couple of chops up there in, in turns of three and four. Yeah, once you take a line up there in the debris on the racetrack, it, uh, it coats the tire pretty good where it takes about a lap to get it cleaned, cleaned off at full off speed. So uh, I think he'll be okay now. Well, it's still darting a little for him out there. Michael Waltrip is down two laps. And here's Daryl Waltrip in the 17, still looking strong. He continues to mosey on up through the field. He has just passed the one car and taken over in 16th position. So old DW having a pretty good night. To look at the leader here, it's Terry Labonte fighting his way but beside Lake Speed. And we'll be back to Richmond International Raceway as we complete 80 with more shortly. Hey, Garth, why'd you get a McDonald's? Oh, man, get this. They got Tina Turner's greatest hits. Elton John's classics, Roxette's latest. Let's go to McDonald's. Yeah! Got Garth Brooks' favorites, too. Each full-length CD is $5.99. Cassette's $3.99 when you buy any extra value meal or large sandwich. One dollar from each CD and cassette benefits Ronald McDonald Children's Charities. Mr. Brooks, would you... Right, sign it. It's here. No. Trade for Tina Turner. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. That was my only Tina. You ever created or invented a new product? Don't just let it sit there. Do something about it. You can start by calling the Inventor's Helpline in Washington, D.C. at 800-227-7000. You'll receive free confidential forms and useful information describing the invention process. And when you call right now, you'll also receive a free brochure which tells you how to begin developing your new idea. So get the ball rolling. Pick up your phone right now and call for your free inventor's kit. Call 800-227-7000. It's Full Throttle Thursday night and Sunshine speeding with pedal to the metal racing action. Top drivers and top riders rev it up. Get in the driver's seat and get into Full Throttle Thursday night as Sunshine rolls with racing coverage. Miami Hurricane Football. We've got your game. September 24th in the Orange Bowl. The undefeated Miami Hurricanes take on the 91 co-national champion Washington Huskies and Heisman Trophy candidate Napoleon Kaufman. The first 10,000 fans in attendance receive a Florida Lottery commemorative pin, saluting the Canes NCAA home win streak record. Miami versus Washington, the showdown you've been waiting for. Call 1-800-GO-CANES. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Liquid Wrench, not flammable with Teflon, thousands of uses around your home, shop, and car. And by STP, Super Concentrated Fuel Injector Cleaner, STP, drive a better car. And by Auto Week, America's only enthusiast weekly. Auto Week is first with all the news every week. Call 1-800-851-2600 for your subscription. We're showing 85 laps now complete. Here you see Terry Lavani still leading as he puts a lap on Joe Nemechek. Earnhardt runs in second place just behind him. Dale trails by about one and five-tenths of a second. That's the difference between the number five car and the number three of Earnhardt currently in second with Wallace third and Gordon in fourth. Further back in the field, remember the story we were telling you about on car number 40? 
how he was leading, doing so well. Bobby Hamilton up there fighting in those front running positions, then made that pit stop. Came down, uh, changed tires. I believe they discovered they were blistered. We can get more on the story of Bobby Hamilton from Dick Berger. Well, Ken, both Hoosier and Goodyear came to this race with a brand new tire, one that had never been run in competition before. Hoosier, in fact, came with a brand new design. They call it asymmetrical. Real complicated to explain it. I really don't totally understand it, but here's an asymmetrical tire that came off the back of Ward Burton's car. As you can see, it's blistered. Jeff Bodine was the Hoosier tester. He is still out there. Apparently, no problems there. The Goodyear cars also came with a new tire. No testing whatsoever. Test is going on right there, right now, on the racetrack. The 7 just radioed in. No problem with tires. Labate continues to lead. He's on Goodyear. But the story is this Bodine. He is amazing on tires. That's Jeff Bodine, the driver of car number seven. I don't think anyone takes as good care of his tires as Bodine. Here you see him. Yep. Jeff Bodine has a real talent for that, uh, not only as a driver, but also as a chassis man. He's able to overcome uh, maybe slightly too soft a compound and make it work, make him live on his car. He doesn't abuse him. He sets the car up properly, and uh, it's paying off. Uh, Dick said he radio radioed in, said no problem, but he's holding on to fifth place uh, where most of the other Hoosier cars have already been on pit road. So it's a real credit to Jeff Bodine. Mark Martin trying to take that spot away. Martin back there in six. Is, is it almost a natural instinct thing to be able to take care of tires like Bodine does? short track experience uh, over the years uh, a lot of times you, you get to pick whatever tire you want to run and some of them are much softer than others and if you can figure out how to make those soft gun balls live uh, you know you can win a lot of races a little bit easier I think Jeff has some of that experience uh, down deep in his basket well he's had two wins this season pretty impressive he also leads the list in DNFs this year has not much to do with the tires of course but that's one that he's trying to work out and, and get some longevity out of this car. Yeah, that's just, you know, part of the pains of uh, owning your own team for the first time. Yeah, or, or bad luck. Or meeting your brother at Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Martin back to the inside. We'll take another look uh, through the field for you. Show you where everybody's running out here. A lot of good racing. Just joining us, hour and a half, rain delay. So we started a little bit late tonight, but we're getting a great race at Richmond International Raceway. Sold out for months, 72,000 seats. They could have easily sold another 15 to 20,000 for tonight's program. They keep adding them, and folks keep showing up. Set through the rain, had a good time, came out here, seeing a good race. As you see Martin pulling away from Jeff Bodine. Mark Martin finds himself fifth relegates Bodine back to six. Mark Martin. Sometimes the conversation is about the what happens in these tire wars and who suffers the most. What about the uh, tire war? Nobody is more opinionated about it than this man right here. Mark Martin in car number six has stated his case several times. You haven't caught up with it. Take a listen. Safety suffers when you race tires. Common sense will tell you, if a man's building a race tire and somebody else builds one faster, the man that's building this tire has got to do something. And when he's got to do something, sometimes you get into some territory that you're not completely and totally familiar with that you think will be fine and isn't. You shouldn't be racing tires. You shouldn't be making war with tires is how I've always been. Only people who get hurt in tire war drivers. They're no fun when you're a race car driver, that's for sure. But it's awful hard to tell somebody, hey, you shouldn't be here, or you're not supposed to be here, because uh, this is America. <laughs> make them as hard as hockey pucks and put all <laughs> you guys right. out there and make you fight on equal stuff. I like that kind of race. Here's Mark Martin in car number six, staying fifth on the field. Trying to close in a bit here. He looks pretty smooth on that steering wheel. He's going to have oh. to work it too off now. Krauss is in good stuff, that's for sure. Labonte first, Earnhardt second, Wallace third, Jeff Gordon. That's who he's trying to close on at the present time.
We've all done this before. You hang a picture, you change its position, you change it again, and before you know it, your wall looks like a dartboard. Forget those nails, forget those screws, forget those damaged walls forever. Introducing the Does It Handy Hanger. Nothing does it like does it. Just place a handy disc on the applicator and watch the special adhesive heat up. Press it on the wall and that's it. Use the Does It Handy Hanger on painted walls, on wood paneling, on wallpaper. As the adhesive cools, it creates a molecular bond that safely holds up to 10 pounds and more. But the patented handy hanger can be removed as easily as it attaches without leaving any mark at all. A nail in ceramic tile? Forget it. But does it, does it on tile. It even does it on glass. And look, your does it handy hanger also comes with these utility hooks. Use them in the kitchen to hang oven mitts and even pots and pans. Use them in the bathroom for towels and your blow dryer. Use them in the bedroom to hang your bathrobe. In your living room for curtain tiebacks. In your shed for tools. On your patio for plants. Does it, does it easily. Everywhere. Stop banging nails in your walls. Drilling monster holes for hollow wall anchors. And forget those peel and stick hooks. They won't hold your breath. And look at the marks they make. That wall is ruined. But Handy Hanger can be removed cleanly from any surface. Amazing. You get the Does It Electric Applicator. Ten handy discs. 10 utility hooks and the handy disc remover all for $29.95. Order your Does It Handy Hanger now. For rush delivery, call 1-800-952-6969. That's 1-800-952-6969. Or send $29.95 plus $5.95 shipping to Does It, PO Box 667, Department Number 270, Georgetown, Connecticut. Order now. Call 1-800-952-6969. With Chuck Bown alongside, I'm Ken Squire here with the International Raceway in the STP Pit Center. Rick Benjamin tonight, Dick Bergman, Randy Pemberton with us. Bring you all the action. Joe Nemechek going down another lap. Boy, Martin threw that one high. <laughs> He's working his way through the lap cars. He's trying to keep the next guy up there, Jeff Gordon, in sight. And uh, Jeff went pretty good, too. Watching these top runners with this uh, baseball strike on. Take a look at the uh, leaders thus far in the race. Terry Labonte jumped right out there. Reinhardt looking to crack it. Leading this. Wallace has had a crack at it tonight. Gordon's had a little shot at first. Martin to get back through this field. Leaders thus far. We've seen out here at Richmond International Raceway. We're talking about Ernie Irvin a moment ago, hearing that he is better. I heard that uh, he was on the phone with Earnhardt and says, don't tell him I've retired. <laughs> Sounds like he's getting better. Yeah. Ernie Irvin, if you're listening tonight up in Michigan, everybody here sure wishes you're back and back soon. Here's the interval between first and second, Labonte and Earnhardt. You know, Chuck, I, one of the things that has impressed me most about Winston Cup this racing this year, I saw at Pocono, Pennsylvania. When you hear all this story about these baseball players going on strike, first I'd like to see them out there with placards in front of the stadium or something. But these guys, Earnhardt, this man right here, two hours before they're going to go out and put their life right on the line, he's signing autographs. He's standing in the back of the NASCAR trailer with a line of people 300 deep. There's Rusty Wallace in the back of his, and there was Ernie Irvin. And some fan came up and gave Ernie Irvin such a hard time that they had to get an officer to take the guy away, and Ernie Irvin stayed there and kept on signing up. I defy you to find that in baseball. I think race drivers have to work so hard to, to make it in this business. There's so many people uh, wanting your job or looking for the opportunity with a short track all over the country. And NASCAR sanctioned races everywhere. It's just a amazing how much dues you have to pay to get here and, and uh, it's pretty hard to get the big head and stuff everybody off it's uh it's, it's a you know it's a real compliment to get to for autographs although i think it's sometimes a little crazy in nascar but uh, these guys are awfully good about it and incidentally they weren't charging 10 or 20 dollars in autographs either let's get randy quickly on dale earnhardt there may be a tire situation developing here well i'll tell you what the discussion was dale earnhardt did go over the radio and these guys talking very short when they're on the radio.
radio. Just like everybody else, we listen to scanners, we try to interpret what they say. He was talking about a right front tire possibly going down. I've lost the crew did scurry around a little bit. But I don't believe it's I don't believe it's Dale Earnhardt. In fact, he was riding behind the 12 car and he was backing up. I think it was on the 12 car, Rick Benjamin. Can you enlighten any more on that? I don't know. Oh, Randy, we're understanding that they're going to try to adjust the rear track bar on Earnhardt's car. That's the second car we've heard of. They want to try to make some rear-end adjustments, apparently, on the three car when he makes his next pit stop. Notice how low that Earnhardt sits in that car, Chuck. I mean, he's he's all the way down in that thing. Yeah, and he's really not that short of a man. He must be, I'm not sure how tall Dale is, but I'll bet he's, you know, close to six foot, maybe even a hair more, and he sits lower than some of the guys that are 5'7". He, he really likes to get uh, get himself down there low in that race car. Watching Earnhardt in second spot, Labonte stays up in the lead. Rusty Wallace maintaining third. He's showing... Uh, with Dale, if uh, he really does want to move that pan hard bar, and if it's holding the car up that much, uh, boy, the field might be in trouble. <laughs> if he's that far off, he can still sit out there and run second. 110 laps as you watch Ricky Rudd under pressure from Rick Mast in car number one. Well, well back on the field, the 10 car. He has not had a good night tonight. Trying to uh, get that one to work, and it, they went back right to fundamentals. They they were running very well, and they got here and then backed up. Now here's a battle for 19th position. As you watch Sterling Marlin and Musgrave. Musgrave was the pole sitter if you're just joining us. And at lap 110, he finds himself struggling to stay in the top 20. And we just saw a glimpse of uh, Terry Labonte up in front of those guys. So he has put both of them on the down a lap already. He's uh, really setting a heck of a pace. That's, uh, that's too bad for the pole sitter already be down a lap. From the high side, you see the second place car, Earnhardt closing in to put Musgrave a lap down and go look for the former Daytona 500 winner, Sterling Marlin. More from the Miller Genuine Draft 400 after this. Plastic bags, milk jugs, rubber gloves. Sounds like a dump site. But it's a list of what's washing up on America's beaches. Join the thousands of volunteers this fall for the International Coastal Cleanup. Be part of the solution and learn more about how you can help keep our beaches clean. Join in this year's Coastal Cleanup. Call 795-8272 for more information. here speeding through the gate passing sprinting charging across the line it's more than just a race it's a winning sensation summer racing 94 from yonkers raceway saturday night on sunshine we're back looking at the top six and ricky rudd who started in 33rd now up in sixth spot and we told you they went right back they, they lost dramatically they qualified poorly and brought themselves back to where they're running right now the uh, raybestos aerial camera providing these exciting shots of tonight's race raybestos breaks the best in breaks giving you these great pictures take a look here at bobby Labonte as he gets into it out here with the 32 that scramble's been going on for the past three or four laps. Yeah, they've got the leader right behind them, and they're all trying to stay in the lead lap, and they're really, uh, they're running hard as they can right now. They don't want to go a lap down, but the pace Terry's setting is going to be tough to stop it. Dick Trickle in the black, yellow numeral number 32, and there you see the 31 of Ward Burton in there. Ward's a little further back. He's being shown a lap or two down. Yeah, Ward's running pretty good, but he's made some green flag pit stops for, for new tires, so uh, he's a little bit behind, but his car's pretty fast. Trickle is uh, currently in 13th position. Here you can see the leader. 120. 
on the docket for car number five. Terry Labonte staying first. Earnhardt in that second position. Now there's Earnhardt, and right with him comes Wallace. They make the dive under Kenny Wallace in car number 90 in that Heilig Myers car. Rusty broke it loose just a little bit coming off the fourth turn there. He's driving it from home. Had a couple of cautions. He just joined us. Jeremy Mayfield socked the wall pretty hard in turn number three. Kenny Wallace spun in the first lap. Some heavy braking going down into turn number one. He got caught up in it. Ended up on the bottom of the racetrack. These cars are about two and nine tenths of a second away from the leader. Wallace to the inside. Now oh, this is what they wanted to see. 72,000 come to their feet as Wallace on the inside and Earnhardt on the outside. Get at it. Caution coming down. Yellow's out. Third of the night. Give you the for why in a moment. Guess what? Guess what? For what? Somebody lost a screwdriver on the racetrack. <laughs> no wonder I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking around and said, my gosh, there's nobody in the wall anywhere. No, there's a screwdriver out there. Well, that was a big break for a few of them, but I tell you, a lot of good cars just went a lap down in the last 15 or 20 laps. Uh, Terry was really running. Yeah, he ran down, uh, among others, Bill Elliott, who's been having a good run. Elliott's up to 16th from 38th position. Leaders are all in here. See that front trio? Labonte, Earnhardt, Wallace all pulling down pit road. Gordon comes in. Martin, Schrader, Brett Bodine. He's had a good night thus far. Came up to 10th for a while. Here's Dick Burke. It is very hot in the pits right now. Mark Martin is pitting. They're all going to take four tires and all the fuel they can put into these cars. Martin, right side tires on. Gordon's a little bit ahead of him with the left side tires on. Rusty Wallace is ahead of everybody. That's no surprise. Wallace is out at 18.2. Gordon is out right behind him. And there goes the number six of Mark Martin. He is third out in that round. Labonte beat him out, however. Yeah, Labonte was... Uh, posted all the way on the end of pit road is his position to pit in and he jumped out there at that stop of 18-7 uh, those stops by Buddy Parrott and company make such a difference the bad luck of the night on that was Hut Strickland he pitted on the yellow just as it came out now he's lost two laps in the Travis Carter car that's a tough break so here you have that number five Terry Labonte that's a stout run, and what a versatile driver Terry Labonte is. He's won on the super speedways. He was a Winston Cup champion. He had five super speedway wins. He's won on the short tracks, and of course, he's very good on the road courses. Won a couple there. Great tire test. And he's won this season, 1994. Looking for another one. Looks like there's 13 cars uh, came into the pits the first time by, the first time the pits opened. So I'd say there's 13 of them on the lead lap, still right in the thick of it. And, uh, some others are going to be trying to get back on that lead lap somehow, somewhere. Now, this caution for the screwdriver on the track came out at lap 124. We are now working, uh, 125, we are now working the 127th lap. And the folks at home kind of like to keep track of when those cautions happen. That's when it was. Brought it out for the third time tonight. Everybody very much still in this race. We'll take a commercial break and get back with the program here in a moment. Hopefully we found that screwdriver by then. <laughs> Stay with us here at Richmond. The Miller Genuine Draft Rusty Wallace Stock Car. See it. Hear it. has a short attention span. Your shoes wear out before you've broken them in. Your favorite restaurant changes themes as soon as you learn to like sushi. But the new Jetta, like all 94 Volkswagen cars, has the longest limited powertrain warranty of any car maker. You can count on it for 10 years. 
And as you probably noticed, a lot can happen in 10 years. Hi folks, I'm Channel 9's Pat Clark. And I'm Paul A. Zinger, asking you to join us September 19th at Lake Nona for Guest Watch's Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. You'll get a chance to rub elbows with guys like Paul, Jack Nicholas, Payne Stewart, Nick Price, and many other world-class pros. And we're playing for more than just the lowest score. We're raising money for Leukemia Society Lymphoma Research Program. So join us here at Lake Nona on September 19th for the Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. Where else can you see guys like this doing what they do best and help lymphoma research? Call Ticketmaster at 407-839-3900. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Ray Bestus Brakes, the best in brakes, by Exide. For great starts every day, replace your old battery with a powerful Exide battery, available at Montgomery Ward stores. And by Finger Hut, values direct to you. Back with you at Richmond International Raceway. 130 laps now on the board. Top six stay pretty much as they were. Caution flag is out. Debris on the speedway. Leader stays with Levante. Harry Gantz, number 33. Remember when the race started? He was dead last. He uh, qualified fairly well. Then he, but he wrecked the car in that final practice period today, so he had to go to the backup. And he was very concerned about it. He thought he might have a draft shot problem. But right now he's running 25th, a lap down. That's where Harry Gantt is at the present time. So uh, Harry Gantt in car number 33 may get a chance to do a little more running here before this night is over. Let's go to Rick Benjamin. A lot of concern in the Jeff Bodine pits as well. Bodine's Exide batteries forward very strong at times tonight, but they've got handling concerns too. We're told that they were going to drop the air pressure in their tires a little, and a, a tire situation where they almost had a blistering problem. They were going to put some wedge in that car too on the pit stop. And Dick Berggren is standing by to let us know a little more how the field is playing this pit stop run. Well, I'll tell you, they are really doing some strategy down here on pit road tonight with two brands of tires, both having new tires. Everybody's trying to decide, is it smart to adjust the wedge on the car or is it smart to adjust the pressure? And it seems as if absolutely everybody down here is experimenting and they're all trying one thing or another. It seems, however, that most of the teams, the good teams, are able to go as many as 100 laps on the tires. Fuel could go just a tad further, but not much. That appears to be the green flag window just about a hundred laps just after we talked about harry gant uh, the number 33 was posted they brought the car in they've done some work to it and uh, now he's coming back on the track here's randy well just to update you on the pole sitter ted musgrave as far as his flight tonight uh car absolutely way way too tight crew chief robin pemberton took a rubber out of the left rear on the last stop and went down a lap real quickly just not up to speed uh, ted's complaining about the car being uh, a little tight robin said it is a lot tight and they're going to try and loosen them up uh, uh you might be able to elaborate up there in the booth a little bit about the rubber in the right rear and uh, what that does as far as spring rate chuck well, Randy, it just basically makes the right rear spring stiffer, and it just uh, takes less takes traction away from the right rear tire, which if the car is pushing and doesn't want to turn, putting rubber in that right rear spring will help. I don't know if it'll solve its problems, but it will help. Restart. Lap 133. See if any help comes to Terry Lavati here. Gets away clean. Nice break. Rusty Wallace in second with him. Gordon third. Earnhardt fourth. Martin fifth. Seventh, Jeff Bodine in eighth, struggle for first as Wallace tries to ease it down on the inside. Riding with Rusty Wallace in second position, closing in on the leader. And coming up out of the hole, that number five jumps to a three car length advantage. Gordon closes in on Wallace in that second spot. Car 75, Todd Bodine passed the leader. Well, look at this, fighting their way down into his first turn. Some tough running out there. Todd Bodine passed the leader after the yellow came out. NASCAR took away that lap, and they penalized Todd a lap. He's back in 30. There's Dave Marcus has won here a couple of times at Richmond. That Olive Garden car, number 71, down on the inside, looking good. And from on high, as they squeeze them down and it turns one and two. Beautiful shot. Car number 
number 29, Grissom, getting under John Andretti in the 43, and 43 back on the outside, just in front of them, the number 30, Michael Waltrip. Nice battle there. Looks like they're going to want to get out in that high length lane, though, to get around the Dave Marcus cars. He might, he might not have gotten retired or something. He seems to be backsliding a little bit. The outside groove seems to be the one that's going because uh, Dave's holding up the inside just a little bit. Now just behind this one is that 29 and 43. There's the 29. Well, that traffic is a little heavy from there on that. I'm telling you, they are everywhere. Second place battle. Gordon goes for it, finds Wallace, and tries to close him down right here. I mean, Jeff, around, Jeff's been right in the thick of it, you know, right from the start. He just hasn't quite got above about third or fourth, but uh, you know, he's been running good. On board with Wallace. Taking a look now. What must he see now? attention do you pay out back? <laughs> well, you just kind of give a, a lot of quick glances, but uh, Rusty knows where he's at all the way around the racetrack, believe it or not. He's looking ahead more than he's looking behind, but you glance enough that you pretty much know where that guy is all the time. See Mark Martin back there in fifth. Red stays six. Brett Bodine seventh. Todd Bodine eight. Kenny Schrader is ninth, followed by Grissom, then John Andretti in eleventh, and Darrell Waltrip is in twelfth. And Dick Prickle in that number 32. Aaron 13th and having a good night. We'll take a break and be back with more of Richmond International Raceway. from the genius of Ken Burns, now available in a deluxe classic edition only by calling Ken Burns Baseball. Preview the first cassette, a national heirloom, 10 days free of charge. If you like it, keep it for just $4.95 plus shipping and handling. Other cassettes will be sent to you one every six weeks, each on the same free trial basis. And call now to find out how to get the companion book, Baseball and Illustrated History, absolutely free. So call 1-800-842-9800 and bring baseball home. Hi folks, I'm Channel 9's Pat Clark. And I'm Paul A. Zinger, asking you to join us September 19th at Lake Nona for Guest Watch's Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. You'll get a chance to rub elbows with guys like Paul, Jack Nicholas, Payne Stewart, Nick Price, and many other world-class pros. And we're playing for more than just the lowest score. We're raising money for Leukemia Society Lymphoma Research Program. So join us here at Lake Nona on September 19th for the Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. Where else can you see guys like this doing what they do best and help lymphoma research? Call Ticketmaster at 407-839-3900. Give you a look at who's led what laps here in the race if you're just joining us as we get up toward lap uh, 154 this time. There are your lap leaders. Terry Labonte has really had a night so far leading 115. Of course, Mark Martin led a lot of laps last week. Thought he was on his way. Schrader led a lot of laps at Darlington, but it was all Bill Elliott when it was over. And it only takes one lap to get the win. It's going to lead that last one, that all most important final lap. But any lap can have that hand grenade in it as it was for Mark Martin that uh, cost him dearly in the points last Sunday. That darling, great race for Bill Elliott. First win since 92. Ah, here's Jeff Gordon and Earnhardt. And looks for the moment like Jeff Gordon. Ah, oh, Earnhardt's right there again. Third spot here. This is all at lap 155. They also thank you. <laughs> they head down the back straight away. Jeff wants to give him a little bit of room down there in turns one and two. Is he as intimidating now as, as he has been called before? Well, you don't see many guys running over him. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's uh, he's smoother and you know he doesn't wrinkle the fenders quite as much as he used to. I think he's, he's just uh, gotten wiser and that's why he has six championships. Probably on his way to number seven this year. Wouldn't that be something? I mean, what'll be something when he goes for eight? 
<laughs> Bill Elliott back in 15th position, running one lap down from dead last. Great performance here tonight. Back to the leaders, lap 160. There you see Terry Labonte continuing to thrash this field. Wallace stays second, Earnhardt third, Gordon fourth, Mark Martin fifth. And there is John Andretti. Now he is staying up in the lead lap in car number 43, running 11th at the present time. And the last time that 43 finished on the lead lap, ooh, Jimmy Spencer in big trouble and coming in. The last time that 43 finished on the lead lap was Richmond, 1988, with Richard at the wheel. Only one week after that terrible flip that he had at Daytona, that devastated. Here's Jimmy Spencer coming in. I don't know, it looked like uh, a yellow caution. I don't know, he was dropping some sparks going down the backstretch, but all the tires are up, but it was smoking, so I don't know if something, ooh, it's burning. Something just come loose on the front end of that car uh, pretty seriously. Well, they got the safety crews there. I'm gonna put the dry chemical to car number 27, comes in on fire. Jimmy's out of it already. The two-time winner this year, Jimmy Spencer, is away from the McDonald's car number 27. Bad break for Jimmy Spencer tonight. Not having the best of evenings. I'm curious as to just what happened to that one. It's hard to call it. I really couldn't tell from here. Just seeing some sparks of smoke and uh, and then a fire. Uh, maybe uh, Dick Randy can find out for us. He was back in 32nd position when that happened and brought out the uh, fourth caution of the night. It comes in lap 163. Leaders are in. Here's Randy. Well, Dale, Dale Earnhardt, Winston Cup champion, is in. Right side uh, already going on. As far as Terry Labonte, he also in. Beat all these guys off of pit road last time by. Interesting on Dale Earnhardt's pit crew. A substitute jackman, David Smith home, having his tonsils taken out as far as uh, on Monday. The two-car Rusty Wallace already down. Terry Labonte goes. Dale Earnhardt goes. Rusty wins. A dead heat off of pit road between Earnhardt as, far, and, uh, as well as the five-car Terry Labonte. Talk about a drag race, even at 45 miles an hour. That's pretty exciting stuff. Earnhardt and the five car beaten by the two cars. They came out. Hmm. So, we'll have 163 in the book now. 164 when they come by in the rearview mirror. Well, we're nearing the halfway point already. It just uh, seems like it's going pretty quick. Joining us now, we were delayed by rain. Hour and a half, the rains came down at Richmond, Virginia. They did a great job of getting this track back in shape, but you can still see dampness along Pit Road. They have tarpaulins that they put along there. Uh, here's a Waltrip coming out in the 17 car. Daryl's been having a good night. He's up in ninth position, and there you see Dale Jarrett rolling the 18 back out for Joe Gibson Company. He's running 19th on the field. We'll take a break and be back with more at Richmond International Raceway. Kenny Wallace a lap down after he spun out on the very first lap. Uh-oh, do you toss and turn all night long? Ouch, do you awaken with neck and shoulder pain from a soft, lumpy pillow? Now join the thousands who have discovered the Contour Pillow, anatomically designed to follow the natural contour of your neck and head while it supports and aligns your spine for a great night's sleep. Look, ordinary pillows lose shape and support. Your upper back and neck muscles work all night long, leading to neck tension, shoulder stiffness, back pain, snoring, and restless sleep. But the Contour Pillow supports your body the way nature intended. Tense muscles relax, rest, rejuvenate. You awaken refreshed and ready to go. The secret is the therapeutic foam. The soft plush foam fingers individually adjust to your facial and neck features. The ultra-firm inner layers provide the gentle orthopedic support for the head and spine. I suffered from stiff necks and headaches all my life. But with the contour pillow, I wake up feeling really refreshed. I can't sleep without it. This pillow's a miracle. I even travel with it. I've spent hundreds of dollars on mattresses and water beds, but only the contour pillow gave me the support and the relief that I needed. Best of all, my husband doesn't snore anymore. 
the contour pillow is now available, so call now for the special introductory price of only $19.95. Doctors sell therapeutic pillows for $60 or more. But now, the contour pillow can be ordered direct from the manufacturer for a special introductory price. And if you order within the next 10 minutes, we'll include the zippered washable cover, a $5 value absolutely free. If the contour pillow is not the most comfortable pillow you ever slept on, simply return it for a full refund, no questions asked. So don't toss and turn all night long. Pick up the phone and call now for the ultimate night sleep. Order now. For rush delivery, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-292-6500 or send 1995 plus 595 shipping to Contour Pillow, P.O. Box 11624, Charlotte, North Carolina. Don't be fooled by imitations. Order the original Contour Pillow now. That's 1-800-292-6500. Getting set or restart. Completing 168 laps as they come to speed with Wallace first, Earnhardt, Labonte, Gordon, Brett Bodine in the top five, Mark Martin in sixth, Rudd in seventh now, Jeff Bodine eighth, Schrader, Grissom in tenth, John in and in twelfth, and Walter in thirteenth. Well, that's a lead lap. It's, uh, uh, let's see, Terry's going to have to work for it. You know, he was up there leading this race at will. He has been pretty much all night. Now he's back to third after the round of pit stop. He's going to have to do a little work, I think, get by uh, Dale and Rusty this time. There's the 10 car up on the outside. Ricky Rudd, what a run he is having tonight. The lead battle developing. There you go, right around Dale and Hart on the outside. That's not easy to do. He's heading for Rusty now. Second place at stake there. Second place as Wallace is drawn away by four at five car lengths. Sword out coming out of turn four. Still doubled up just behind these four or five leaders. From Wallace's view. Well, Jerry's, Jerry's car is really accelerating off the second turn. He's really able to get that front turn and get that throttle down. And it's just, uh, you can just see him pull away from Earnhardt about a car length each time to lead the second turn. Now, Ricky Rudd and the 10 car certainly up in contention tonight. This is the first time they brought that particular car out since Rudd won at New Hampshire with it back in July. Hoping for equally as good results tonight here at Richmond. And as I say, when they got here, that car was fast. It was uh, capable of sitting up in the front row. And from the dog cam, hanging out the side. Boom! How about that for a little nudge? He's battled for seventh position. Hutch Strickland down there going to give it a shot now. Remember 1984 after that terrible wreck at Daytona? He came in here with his eyes taped open. More trouble. Tire going down on Bobby Hamilton's car. Let's go down to the pits. Well, I don't believe that's the case, Ken. I think they were talking about a possible ignition box. It is not fired right now. The hood is up on the Kendall Pontiac. Uh, they are looking to possibly, well, they're going to take the air cleaner off. I thought they were going to the valve cover, but she shut down. Initially, I thought it was the ignition box, but uh, it's not running. That's all we know right now. Okay, he's in. It's going to be lengthy. We were told he had a tire problem. Not the case. Watch that 40 car down on the bottom there, Chuck. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, that's, that's pretty serious. Something's definitely misfiring. I don't know if it's broke eternal parts or if it is ignition but uh, it's major problems for Bobby Hamilton tonight. Earlier in the race he had uh, been one of the pace setters. He was running 31st when he got in trouble there. You know that last go around the pit stops I'm curious if the first four cars there if any of them made suspended adjustments and if they did uh, which ones and how much because uh, you know, they were all four running awfully good before the, the caution came down they all four pit and I just wondered if they left everything alone if they're happy or if they uh, are working on them. Maybe we can get that story from Dick Bergen and uh, Randy in a moment. Watch this 5, 3, and 24 confrontation for second spot. Terry Labonte. So methodical. Just doesn't use a car up. But he gets everything that a car has to offer. Now look at the Petty car. Dreddy, DW, and Bristol here. Genuine draft, 400 after this. All over America, 
the information age is dawning. New technology making the future now. Distance learning, medical imaging, and expanded choice for basic and new information services. How rapidly the future arrives in Florida depends not only on technology, but also on the rules and laws of your state government. Legislators are studying the issues for 1995. So should you. Get informed and get involved. Commentary on the latest happenings in the sports world. It's Sports Talk Live, Florida's only live televised call-in sports talk show. Wrap with the beat writers who cover the breaking stories on Sports Talk Live. Monday nights on Sunshine. Rick Mast, a couple of laps down back there in 23rd in car number one. Yeah, Rick's been fast too all night, but I think he had to make an un unscheduled green flag pit stop once the tires. That's putting down a couple laps is hard to make it up here, but uh, both the Bona are having a good run. They're both chasing uh, Mark Mark right now. Jeff Bodine, number seven, is in the seventh spot, and there you see the 26. Uh, he's got him inside. He just can't quite get up there and do anything with it, but uh, he's working on it. <laughs> Twenty nine and forty three another time. Been a good boy. And Grissom is going to win this battle. Sure they're, they're both having an awful good day. So with that move Grissom goes to ninth and John Andretti is back to 10th. And right there in the picture is number 17. That's Waltrip. Darrell in 11. Darrell's having a pretty good run this evening as well. Just behind this Tucson. Yeah, and actually about the past month, the uh, old DW has gotten her going a little bit better here. He's getting stronger and stronger. And starting to have a pretty good, pretty good run. But I'm sure he's pretty happy about it. Bet he is. And the seed is 17. Here's Dick Burton. Jimmy Spencer's in the back of his truck right now. Your car's just caught up with you. How wild a ride was that? Not really that, but I was trying to cook some French fries. No, I can tell you something. All night long, it started to skip right from the get-go, you know, and we really don't know what happened. I switched the ignition boxes twice, three times on the coils, and evidently it broke a time of chain or something, slapped back to the carburetor, caught on fire, just a little carburetor fire, nothing major, but, uh, you know, we weren't running as well as we wanted to, but still felt we had a top 10 car. Try and get him next week at Dover. Yeah, he doesn't, a little bit of fire doesn't bother this guy at all. Uh, he makes a great short order shift, no question about it. Throw a quarter uh, pounder quarter on there pounders. for me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, next week is Dover, the week after Martinsville, then North Wilkesboro, and then October night, Charlotte. Busy time, 10 weekends in a row to start an air at Indian. They're riding with Jeff Bodine, right behind brother Brett. watching. <laughs> Running order after 184 laps. Take you down to the field. The 31 up on the outside. That's Ward Burton. He's running two laps down in 24th position at present time. Ward Burton in the 31, but for the moment, running very well. Yeah, I think he's again, is only down from a green flag pit stop for tires, but uh, his car's been pretty good today. And Mast in the number one, remember, he's running in 23rd. The story of the race right now is the number six car with Mark Martin, with whom you're riding. He's in fifth, and the 26 down, tucked in the bottom of the racetrack. That is uh, Brett Bodine and Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine getting through on Brett Bodine. Jeff has picked up one. I don't even think they did it. <laughs> he just kind of slid up through, and here he comes, bottom of the racetrack again. Boy, he just pushes it to the bottom, and it stays. It doesn't slide. It doesn't move. 
it doesn't need to come off that arm. He's been in the thick of it all night. He's run it well. He is a magnet the track down there. But those first four seem to have separated themselves just a little bit from the rest of the field. Uh, I don't know if it's just pit position, flat position, good pit stops, or, or if they're that strong. But uh, there's not a lot of difference in all these cars out here. It takes them a long time to reel down to the back of the pack and start lapping cars. But, but those first four are pretty good today. And we saw Lamonti do that earlier, Chuck. That number 10 car, there you see Ricky Rudd in seventh position. Let's check in with his crew chief, Billy Engel. A good, strong run by Ricky Rudd. Billy Engel, crew chief, can you run those leaders down? I believe we can, Dick. It seems to take our car about 20 laps to get going where we can run a little quicker than the leaders. On that last run there, long run on cars, we about three tenths quicker than the leaders. So uh, we have a few long runs. I believe we'll be looking pretty good. We'll show you how far he has to go to catch up with those leaders. Remember, he came in tonight in fourth place in the Winston Cup standings. His own car, own crew, he's putting the bills, and he's putting his foot on the floor of that car number 10 as he tries to move up through the field. There's the interval to the leaders in the event, Wallace and Labonte, one and two. That's the first and second, so it's about eight seconds back to Rudd as he finds himself in seventh. Third spot is still Earnhardt. Getting up toward 200 laps, Chuck, 195 this time by. Looks like Earnhardt's where he wants to be. <laughs> yeah, and Terry is finally starting to reel uh, Rusty in, but it's taken him a while this time. Rusty stayed fast for quite a while on this restart. Yeah. Take a look at the interval. Uh, back to uh, Mark Martin in the sixth position. I think Jeff Bodine has just yeah. taken the sixth position from Mark. Uh, Jeff's kind of on the move. Looks like Ricky yep. Rudd might be yep. going to work on him, too, here in a minute. I don't know if Mark Starr is getting more tight on him or, or what. I'm not sure. But uh, on the board. car on the seventh car on the move. On board with Mark Martin as he continues to stay right in the midst of this break. So we're closing in on the halfway mark as you watch Ricky Rudd in the 10. Mark Martin. Four laps to halfway. Pretty good race here tonight. 13 cars are made in that lead lap. Terry Labonte has dominated the lap chart tonight. He's led most of the laps in this race, and here he is trying to get that lead rested from Rusty Wallace in car number two. And he's sizing him up now. He's been following him for quite a while, and now he's just wondering, uh, do I try that outside, or think that's going to slip up a little bit and give me that inside? He knows it's not going to be easy. All the way to the outside. Here's the 10 car. 10 is around six. That's for six spot. And back up front, here's the struggle. This for first place. The Hendrick. He's going to make it. Clean yeah. and sweet. Hendrick car, just beautiful tonight. Kellogg's colors go back into the lead. And here in the Miller Genuine Draft, their car finds itself back in second spot another time. Off the fourth turn and down the main straightaway. Closing in on the halfway mark as they lap Loy Allen another time. He's running 33rd on the field. Loy Allen in car number 19. Well, Rusty's driving this pretty hard trying to keep up with Terry. You can see him breaking loose a little bit coming off the second turn there. He's, he's trying to hustle it, but uh, Terry's car is just awfully good. And Terry Labonte has now led 127 of the first 200 laps. We're halfway in the race. As they put a lap on Kenny Wallace. Kenny's had a great season in Grand National. What, three wins there? Won that Arca race at Daytona to begin the season. Now driving in that Heilig Myers car. From our Raybestos aerial platform, I, I mean Mike Wallace. Yeah. I said Kenny. I, there you go. Let me correct myself. Kenny's having a pretty good year, too. Yeah. He's won a couple of Grand three. National races. But, but Mike, he's been to victory lane three times this year. He's doing real well. Well, Ray Best is providing these exciting aerial shots of the tonight's race. Ray Best is breaks, the best in breaks, with the best in these high aerial camera views of this three-quarter mile track.
the sport that grew up with the nation. Baseball. The remarkable new series from the genius of Ken Burns, now available in a deluxe classic edition only by calling Ken Burns Baseball. Preview the first cassette, a national heirloom, 10 days free of charge. If you like it, keep it for just $4.95 plus shipping and handling. Other cassettes will be sent to you one every six weeks, each on the same free trial basis. And call now to find out how to get the companion book, Baseball and Illustrated History, absolutely free. So call 1-800-842-9800 and bring baseball home. Defending national champ Florida State is back in action. The strength, skill, and power of the Seminole spirit is the secret to another winning season for Florida State. See all the big plays and big moments live on Seminole Saturday. The Seminoles lead their warpath to the home of the Demon Deacons, ready to steal the hopes of a Wake Forest victory. Live Seminole Saturday pay-per-view. Call your local cable operator today. laps are now complete and you're riding with Rusty Wallace for these live pictures from Richmond International Raceway as Wallace puts another lap on Nemechek gets himself about a two car length advantage that's the biggest lead he's had in the last 15 or 20 Earnhardt's keeping him right there inside and Jeff Gold is not very far behind so those first four cars are still still right in the thick of it but uh, Mark Martin is getting a couple of caution to get to the edge of that car uh, I guess that he was uh, pushing earlier, but I guess I guess wrong. I had a 50-50 chance, but he's a little loose. But, and uh, I'm sure that uh, he'll get that thing straight down and be a contender, too. Oh, here How we go. How about here this go. another time? Five to five again. And Dale's saying, oh, boy, here's my chance. <laughs> that is simply great racing. 72,000 people. They bought every seat there was to be had. They bought them months ago. And... <laughs> Coming up out of two, yeah, done that you time. could see Wallace having to take an extra saw on the wheel to keep that one straight. And Terry Labonte took advantage of it. You know, if you have to sit on that inside and work it very hard, it doesn't take long to get the right rear tire kind of warm, and then you start uh, backing up just a little bit. So you really hate to sit there and run side to side, even though you can do it because it abuses your tires. So you want to give it a good hard charge for one or two laps if you get it done great. If not, fall back behind and cool things down and give it another run. Here's Harry Gantz still out there in car number 33. He's back in 25th position, but he's still percolating in his last appearance here at Richmond International Raceway. I don't believe he got to test that car at all either. Not he a bit. Had a, had a problem in practice, so uh, that, that's not a bad night considering that. Well, they're at it again. Here's the number seven, in the first car on Hoosier tires in the race, running in fifth spot. And Rick Mast, a lap or two down, right in there as well. Mast is on fresh tires, so he's kind of collecting them. That uh, number one car is uh, is being shown three, three laps down, at least at the present time. The contention car is the number 10. That number 10 has just done an outstanding job all night, but for the moment, he's having to look up from under another time. Ricky Rudd had Bodine. Bodine's got him back. These guys have been swapping position. Roy Allen is back on pit road with the car number 19. He's well in the back, tail ending the field. Look at this 7 and 10 go at it, Chuck. Ricky's running a good uh, car width higher all the way around the corner uh, down there in one and two. I don't know if this car just works a little bit better. But now Jeff wanted to hide the other end of the racetrack. So, uh, well, now that's... Uh, Ricky Webb's going to have to hold her down low and want to do this time. He'll just pass it to the inside. All of this for fifth position. <laughs> and 26 has gone back around Grissom. Now, this has been going on for a while, too. Yeah, they're not very far behind the two we were just looking at. So uh, there's racing going on everywhere out here. Seventh place is again Brett Bodine, and back to eight goes Grissom. That's exactly where he started the event tonight. So. We have 225 laps complete, and everybody's happy here at Richmond, even they had to wait an hour and a half for this one to get underway, as Labonte and Wallace continue to pace the show. There is only one total body fitness machine that gives you a complete aerobic workout while stretching and toning all large muscles at the same time. This is it. 
There is only one fitness machine that is whisper quiet and totally non-impact. This is it. There is only one fitness machine recommended by fitness expert Covert Bailey to burn fat, lose weight, and keep it off. This is it. If you're looking for the best time to take action, get off the diet merry-go-round, lose weight, and keep it off. This is it. Call now for your free video and brochure. They get paid good money just to horse around. So get the inside track on the latest results in racing. The Caller Race Report, 6.30 p.m. Thursday through Monday on Sunshine. the meaty meatball pizza a whole new reason to fall in love with pizza hut it's a meatball extravaganza loaded with italian sausage pepperoni and two layers of cheese a medium's only $8.99 and a second medium pizza is just five dollars more try the meaty meatball pizza because when something's this good you're gonna fall head over heels with you one of the most historic towns in America, Richmond, Virginia, and one of the raciest towns. Boy, they love their Winston Cup stock car racing here. 72,000 seats sold out months in advance to see racing like this. Here's Grissom, and here's John Andretti in 43. And I think, I think that battle's over. I think uh, Steve flipped up a little bit before it turned, and John jumped up the inside, just loaded on by. Eighth position to John Andretti. He's fighting for a chance to stay in that car, and what a show he's putting on. Here comes Mark Martin another time back on it, and look at this for second place. Well, hello. <laughs> well, he jumped it up there quickly. <laughs> the men in black at it again for second place. Black car. The three and the deuce. Earnhardt and Wallace. And again, Wallace loose up on that outside. Yeah, yeah, but watch cool those tires off and come right back. The brothers side by side again. The brothers Bodine. A little love feast out here another time. Not putting a wheel on each other. Boy, it's been a while since you've seen this much side by side racing, huh, Chuck? Yeah, I think these guys are just figuring out a little bit better lines because, you know, they'll kind of fall back a few positions and then the next thing you know, boom, they're right back up and retake the positions they just lost. So they're just uh, sorting out lines out there if they're tight or loose or whatever, figuring out a little bit faster ways to get around which one they It's Mike Wallace up on the outside in Junie Donlevy's car. What, 63 different Winston Cup drivers have driven for Junie. Of course, he's only won that one Winston Cup race. But when he comes to Richmond, it's always special. Hometown, and he's been around here since day one. Ran that first Darlington race. A lot of history with that gun movie team. Labonte. Car owner Rick Hendrick has won only once here at Richmond. We have to go back to 86 to find that. Tim Richmond won that one for him. Last car in the lead lap is Schrader in 13th position. Number 25. His teammate Terry is not very far behind. Uh-huh. That's how close Labonte is to lapping the 13th place car. This is at lap 238. I'm sure Kenny knows he's there and he's running just as hard as he can. His spotters told him Terry's coming, but uh, 43 just knocking him down. John Andretti coming on. Up to seven. Seems good to see those STP colors running that yep. well again, Chuck. Yeah, that's a pretty sight to see that number 43 pony here, so making a strong run. Take a look at a Napa field summary for you. Folks at Napa making this possible for you to follow back through the field, see where everybody's running. The surprise right now is Andretti in the 43. Started 19th. 
And the son of Aldo Andretti's having a great night. There he is in that 43, and uh -oh. looks like that seven is off the off its speed a little here. I don't know if his he's in a right front tire problem or if he just went in the corner a little too hard, got up the loose stuff and slipped up on it. Looks like it just slipped up on it. So John Andretti gets better almost every week now. 16th at Darlington a week ago. Comes in here. He's up there. Can he stay the course, though? He's at lap 241. We've got 400 to make the distance. Look at Grissom come in digging another time. Back and forth. Back and forth. They're working hard for it. So that's Grissom dusting off the car number seven. And it sure looks like there's something slightly amiss on that uh, car of Jeff Bodine at this point. Here's yeah, he's, Ward he's, Burton easing on up through. He's slowing up just a little bit here. I don't know if it's just starting to lose his grip. And, you know, that happens. You get the long green flag stretch, and sometimes it just kind of starts to get it. And the 43 trying to close in on Brett Bodine at the present time. John Andretti stepped off it for just a moment there as he goes searching for even uh, stronger cars to run against now. He's tried everybody all up through the field, and so far he's accomplishing from 19th position. Richard Petty won this race a record seven times, including five straight years in 043. More from the Miller Genuine Draft 400 after this. Genuine draft for us to want a stock car. See it. Hear it. Feel it. Catch it. If you can. Leslie Nielsen's bad golf made easier. Billy, the reason the game is called golf is because all the other four-letter words have been taken. It's the new home video that teaches you the fundamentals. The only really useful tip in golf is the one you give to the starter. And how to play the problem lie. Call now to order Leslie Nielsen's bad golf made easier. Call now to order Leslie Nielsen's bad golf made easier. Only 19.98. Call 1-800-522-5333. Right side, Jared Lynch, touchdown, Bama! All my life I've spent about coming to Nepal and seeing see the mountains and the people. here as you watch Morgan Shepard up there in the top 10 in points and here's Bill Elliott right with him remember they all are lapped down but this is the battle for 15 stay with us for a moment we were mentioning earlier they're talking about putting a little museum together up in Stewart Virginia Wood Brothers I had so, heard about that but so I... famed well I think they're months away it isn't ready for a while but they're I, talking about I, I think. don't think they'll have much of a problem filling uh -huh. it up though the Woods but what a career they have car number seven Bodine is on the pit road I think that particular set of tires just didn't get the job done like uh, some of the others I think it was just about to go a lap down so he decided to come on in back to 12th position here he is Right side rubber going on. We've got a tire off and a car into the wall almost. Let's see if it's going to bring out a caution. Yellow is out. Looks like Hutt Strickland. Number, number 23 down. in trouble. Got a right front down, I believe, going to the first turn there. Boy, Boy that'll look. be costly for Jeff Bodine. He's sitting at the pits now getting that tire. That's too bad. Well, that's going to put him a lap out of Kilder with the field. Bad break for Hutt Strickland. Lucky to save it. It looked like it was headed pell-mell into that outside retainer. Yeah, it did. I thought he was going to have a pretty good impact, and I'm not even sure if he even touched it. I don't he, think he, he was did. lucky. He got her slowed down and under control just before he got into the pit. On pit road, Strickland in the 23. Leaders now pitting. Strickland was 25th, and that incident took place. 
This is at lap 252. Leaders in. 45 miles an hour on pit road tonight. Labonte, the leader, brings them in. Earnhardt with him. Gordon is in. I believe Ken Schrader got his lap back. I think it was a big break for him. And Schrader did get his lap back. Let's go down to pit road. Well, Brian Griffin on the front tire for Terry Labonte's team. Gary Smith works the rear, right rear. Walter Smith on the jack. They're already over to the left-hand side. Tires are off. New set going on the left-hand side. A race down pit road between Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. Terry got the way. A race with Rick Dale Earnhardt as well. Terry comes out fourth. So there are the front three again. Wallace out there first, Gordon in second. Boy, it must be hard to stay at 45 and still win those battles. <laughs> how do you how do you put all that together? Look, let's take a look at what happened to the 23 car again. Had the flat and see how close he came to that wall. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> I mean, right there. What was that song Henry Mancini wrote about Mr. Lucky? <laughs> Hot Strickland. I just hope he didn't do too much suspension damage driving the car back on a totally cut down right front tire. It's a long way around this three quarter mile track and dragging that rim. Uh, sometimes it'll grind off the sway bar or other parts of the suspension. It causes some major problems. Hopefully he'll be okay. So John Andretti keeps the 43 car in the top 10. With him bunched up, we'll get a chance to see just how much more he can do in this race tonight. Let's go to Dick Bergman. And we'll ask the guy that really knows the answer to that. How about the job this guy Andretti's doing tonight? Uh, so far, he's been doing super. The car's real heavy. is pushing over, all around, but he's driving the heck out of it. And so far, we've caught the cautions right to keep from getting the lap down. So uh, everything's going good right now. Notice this hat, by the way. Everybody else has to wear their headset over the top. Richard's got one, so he can wear his cowboy hat, and he can also listen in his headset. I'm going to get my hat on with the rest of the stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> it's an art form, folks. It's an art form. In sixth spot right now, John Andretti for Richard Petty, here in the Miller Genuine Draft 400. In 1990, world champion Julio Cesar Chavez defended his title against Meldrick Taylor. As the final seconds ticked away, Taylor was clearly ahead on points. Then it happened. Oh, Daniel Taylor! With two seconds left, the referee stopped the fight. And Chavez was still champion. Chavez Taylor II, unfinished business, one of four championship fights Saturday, September 17th, live on pay-per-view. ground for the PGA, where today's stars first made the cut. Names like Daly, Jansen, and Lehman. Someday, these players, too, could be the greats of tomorrow. The Hooters Jordan Golf Tour, Thursdays at 6 on Sunshine. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. By UAW GM, people working together. And by Pyroil, quality automotive formulas from the makers of Valvoline. For performance products, there's just one name, Pyroil. Back at Richmond, getting set for another restart. We're in our fifth caution of the event, the Miller Genuine Draft 400. Wallace first, Gordon second, Earnhardt third, and Terry Labonte now lies in fourth. With more on the Labonte story, let's go trackside. Well, Gary Dehart and uh, Rick Hendrick, the car owner, stand here. You all got smiles on your faces, and then deservedly so, you've had a good run. But what about the pit stop? Kind of put you back just a bit. Yeah, we had a little problem on one of the lug nuts, I think. It, but we're, not a big deal. We, we, we'll get back up there with them in a little bit. The car's really great. It's been good all week. Uh, we did a lot of work on it and changed a bunch of things around. But right now, though, we're looking at the 
looking forward to another long run. We ought to get back up there. Yeah, you guys haven't dominated a race like this in a long, long time, at least Terry has. No, we really need it also. We've had some bad luck, and uh, I guess you make your own luck sometimes, but uh, the car is running great now. Hope, hope we'll do all right. Good luck. Uh, Dick Berger, what's going on with the two cars? Uh, some problems are going on with the two car. They are talking about a potential steering problem. They're hoping it's just a tire pressure problem and that when the green flag drops, it will go away. But Rusty has called back to the crew and said he thinks potentially it's a servo problem. That's the power steering. Makes the car hard to steer. Meanwhile, Roger Penske has radioed into his driver, Rusty Wallace, and said, watch that restart. NASCAR has warned me, do it their way does it their way off to a clean start. Jeff will die in the seven, a couple of laps down up on the inside and yeah, immediately right. falling back. Making a move by Gordon there. He's going to jump to the inside real quick. I forgot when the start finish line. He's going to race him hard. He wants to get up there and get those five bonus points. Yeah, Earnhardt hasn't been up there yet tonight, has he? Not yet. So here's Earnhardt coming up for second, trying to chase down Wallace. This is for the lead. Remember in fourth, Levante with Rudd in fifth and John Andretti in sixth. And once again, Earnhardt and Wallace lock up in a battle for first place. Bang. Nope, not quite. Let's see what they do up here in two. You can see this number two car, and there is something amiss on that car that comes out of there. Wallace was today. Uh, he's got him, uh, got, him, he got him clean and easy. Yeah. Coming off that second turn, he said, uh, too much coast. And I wasn't sure what he meant. I was embarrassed to ask. I guess he should have. What do you think that means? Uh, really Getting sure. back in the throttle? Yeah, that, was, that would have been my guess. Was too much coast means uh, not picking up the throttle quick enough. But uh, uh, maybe he meant something else entirely. I guess maybe he asked Rusty that someday. I'm not exactly sure what he was talking about. after the show is over. <laughs> Have a little chat with it guy. Looking good in second. But look at Earnhardt draw away. Well, he's got those bonus points now, and he's enjoying the lead while he can. And uh, Terry Lamone is trying to figure out how he's going to get back. To Five bonus points collected by Earnhardt for scooting back out in front. And here comes Mark Martin. Down to the inside on John Andretti. This is for position. Position six. Here comes Brett Bodine. Mark Pitty making a move now. He's the one that uh, was loose, real loose. Obviously, they got to work on during that caution flight. He went to uh, charge his way to the front now. Mark Martin in six. Andretti in seven. And it's Brett Bodine in eight. Chris is right there in eight, too. So, uh, I think just in front of them is that 12 car. For Bobby Allison, supposed to be for three years. Derek Cope in there. We got a shampoo company, 17 car up in here as well. Daryl Waltrip. I think everyone is thrilled for Bobby Allison. There's the 12 car up on the outside in those blue, yellow, and white colors. And let's hope that really works out for Bobby and company. And without a sponsor most of the season. And you see him out of turn number two with John Andretti down on the inside. The 12 car has been running uh, back a ways in this field. It's in 19th position. There you see it. Blue, white, and gold colors now on that 12. It's called Straight Arrow. Is that the uh, one lap down to 19? Is that, I think it's one. Maybe two. Let's see here. Couple. Couple down. Here's Gordon and Labonte for another strike in that position. Just doesn't quit out here. That, that's third spot. And Labonte wastes no time dispatching Gordon that time and going in search of Rusty Wallace in second spot. Remember the seven cars, now a couple of laps down. Yeah, he's going to have to use those tires now. Try to get up there and get his lap back. He really can't afford to sit back and kind of take it easy now. He's running 17th on the field. We'll take a break and be back with more at Richmond International Raceway. To a seven-year-old, velocity doesn't mean much. Boy. The equations that surround mass and momentum aren't as much fun as the song on the radio. 
and crash test dummies don't go on family vacations. But the people who buy Volkswagen Jettas do. That's why our engineers designed the new Jetta with dual airbags, front and rear crumple zones, side impact beams, and a rigid passenger safety cage. Velocity, mass, and momentum don't mean much to children, and we plan on keeping it that way. There's something fresh and healthy cooking all across this land. Hello, good roasted chicken. Goodbye, frying pan. Win a Las Vegas getaway. Gamble with someone else's money. See Kenny in concert. Kenny's Flame and Fortune sweepstakes. Get your free game ticket at Roasters today. You're going to love this food. Kenny Rogers Roasters. It's the wood that makes it good. Defending national champ Florida State is back in action. The string. Skill and power of the Seminole Spirit is the secret to another winning season for Florida State. See all the big plays and big moments live on Seminole Saturday. The Seminoles lead their warpath to the home of the Demon Deacons, ready to steal the hopes of a Wake Forest victory. Live Seminole Saturday pay-per-view. Call your local cable operator today. This is at lap 295. If you're just joining us, we're live in Richmond International Raceways. Three-quarter mile track tonight here on TBS. And you've got four top cars all in here together. Lap after lap, Wallace versus Earnhardt. Oh, this is remarkable. Second at Darlington was Earnhardt just last week. Standing his lead by some 26 points. He's at four top five finishes in the last five races. Looks like he's trying to extend it tonight. And look at Wallace come right back up in there and try to muscle his way through. Oh, almost touching. This is good stuff. They're really running hard for the lead. Terry is back there just wanting to get by. And Jeff Gordon is pretty much in the thick of this, too. It's a, it's a great race tonight. It really is. And I can't emphasize enough for new folks that might be watching for the first time or just joining us. You can't you got to get out to the racetrack and see it for yourself. But when they dive into turn number one, that's over 100. Oh, look at that little bobble. Wallace looks like he's going to throw that car away lap after lap, and he just won't give it up. Now he's being forced to. You can see the five car, Labonte, trying to edge his way in. Three-way struggle for the lead. Lapping Hutch Strickland. board with Rusty Wallace. He's going to have to let that right rear tire cool down just for a minute here. He broke it loose pretty good the previous lap to not turn forward and open the door for Terry to jump on the inside of him. And Rusty really couldn't get in a fair race because they come up on the hot strike when Rusty had to let off and get back in line. The outside lane was kind of blocked. But now Terry can get up there and see what he can do with Dale. It's, uh, it's interesting. Well, here's Earnhardt back in front. Last week at Darlington, what happened out there, Earnhardt, when you seem to be letting people by? Were you protecting your point lead there? I was running it hard at the racetrack and let me. Somebody said, well, he, he, he took it easy because he ran for the point. But really, I ran it as hard as the racetrack would let me in without getting in trouble. And uh, we just got loose. But still, it comes from 27th starting position. At Darlington and finishing that well, I was happy. And I like to win our tenth one there, but in that hundred thousand dollar bonus, it wasn't meant to be. We'll, we'll get him this week. He's getting them right now, but Labonte's about to get him back. The two-time winner of this race, Earnhardt Challenge, by Texas Terry Labonte down on the bottom. A couple of Chevys mixing it up right now. The Richard Childress team with that good wrench number three, still keeping the nose out in front, but Labonte dominating that time into the corner. The Earnhardt car just works better on the outside, Chuck Bound. Yeah, it does. You know, Dale doesn't have to change his line one bit when these guys want to challenge him on the inside. Dale's running up there anyway. But when uh, Terry and Rusty go down to the inside and try to challenge Dale, they've got to keep their car pinched, getting off that second turn. And, and it's hard on their tires, but I think Terry's good. He just got on by. 303 laps. This Rebestus aerial platform giving you these remarkable pictures of a three-way battle for the lead at Richmond that has swapped back and forth in the last 30 laps between this trio. All of a sudden, 
Terry Labonte asserting himself and drawing away by as much as four car lengths for the moment. Huh. Well, for the moment. That moment was about the length of the backstretch. More from Richmond. It's great racing in a moment. The first woman to play in a professional hockey league. At Tony Roma's, we're famous for making America's best ribs. And now, for a limited time, you can enjoy all the world-famous baby backs you can eat for the price of a full slab. If you want great ribs, make Tony Roma's your goal. Hi, I'm Dennis Erickson of the University of Miami. I'm Norm Tripp from Alamo Renicar. Join us for a day of golf at Arvidas Weston Hills Golf and Country Club in the second annual Alamo Golf Classic. Alamo Renicar is committed to educational endeavors in South Florida and is proud to sponsor this event. And all benefits go to the University of Miami Athletic Scholarship Fund. We'll tee off at 12.30 on Monday, January 23rd. Hope, Hope to see you there. there. Sometimes, all you really need to change things for the better is a fresh coat of paint. And when it comes to quality, durability, and a real choice of colors, there's nothing like Benjamin Moore paint. And the only place you can find Benjamin Moore paint is at your Benjamin Moore dealer, where you'll also find the kind of knowledgeable advice you're looking for. Benjamin Moore, a stroke of brilliance. We're back with you live at Richmond International Raceway in the Miller Genuine Draft 400 after 315 laps. The 1984 Winston Cup champion looking for his 12th victory in this great series is leading at the present time. Terry Labonte is there with Wallace, Earnhardt, Gordon chasing after him tight. There you see that interval from that first place car back to the second place man on the field. Rusty Wallace, then Earnhardt, then Gordon, Rudd fifth, Martin sixth, Grissom is in seventh, followed by Andretti in eighth, and Ken Schrader in the ninth position. Back to tenth, it is uh, Brett Bodine, and in eleventh is uh, Daryl Walter. Back through the field, remind you there have been five cautions, 35 laps under yellow, 13 lead changes among six drivers tonight, but that doesn't tell the story. There have been about 30 lead changes. Those lead changes only at the start-finish line. And that Earnhardt-Wallace battle, that was out of every second turn they were swapping them. Get an update on Earnhardt. Randy Pemberton can tell us more. It's a heck of an interesting story down here. You're looking at a shot of Mike Moore. He is Earnhardt's jackman at the present. He's not the jackman that started out tonight. That was Woody Chavis. He was filling in for uh, the guy that used to jack the car, and that's David Smith. He's been here forever. He had his tonsils out. That's not even the ironic thing. What happened is on the second stop of the night, uh, Woody Chavis, he finished up. Mike Moore, who you're looking at now, he came over to jack the car. He cut the index finger off on his left hand from the top knuckle up. He told his parents not to worry about it, but that's what happened. He continued to jack the car. He finished it, went over to the doctors. He asked if he could sew it back on. They said no. He said, I'd like to jack the car the rest of the night. They said, well, if it won't kill you, you can do it. But he's out here jacking the car with a huge, huge injury. That's unbelievable. I thought only... How about only race car drivers did that stuff? <laughs> the battle crew members are just as yeah, dedicated. Just as tough and just as dedicated as is David Smith. Yes. Boy, David Smith gets a lot of points. Offered a wonderful prayer to Ernie Irvin. And David spot a guy we missed. Appreciate missing. it. Hurry up, get back. Please. Yep. Now look at Gordon getting into the bottom of the racetrack and finding the line working. And Earnhardt working him over a little. Labonte stays first. Wallace, for the moment, is second. This is the third. <laughs> Bernard has won short track race in 94. He won at Bristol. Wallace has taken a couple. He won that second race. Bristol also won Martinsville. 
And Martinsville's coming up in a couple of weeks again. Last year, Wallace dominated on those short tracks until the end of the season when all of a sudden Mark Martin just mowed down everything for a while. Dick Berger can fill us in more on Ray Everham, the crew chief on this 24 car, Jeff Gordon fighting for third. Well, it's quite a story, Ken Squire. Uh, Ray Everham's grandmother, Maggie Bailey, 85 years old, Paul Ray the other day, said she had just been into a department store. And she said, Ray, I'm so impressed. They have Jeff Gordon hats, Jeff Gordon shirts, Jeff Gordon plastic model cars. But she said, Ray, it just brought me to tears when I saw the Ray Everham race car. It's wonderful, Ray. But can you please do something about those Fords? Maggie Bailey, 85 years old, grandmother to Ray Everham, tonight is locked in her apartment with the telephone off the hook, as she always is during a Winston Cup race, <laughs> watching her grandson perform. <laughs> and there's the grandson. What a smart cookie he is. What a great combination that 24 is. Ah, and they're proving it right here. Back to the bottom. And, and look at Earnhardt, so smooth. When you, when you go by him, you've done a day's work. <laughs> he doesn't let you by, that's uh -uh. for sure. Yeah, you know you've been in a race and you can finally make a move around him. Gordon, uh, you know, he did it right. He, he tried it a couple of times, and he backed off and cooled things down, gave it another run. This time he completed the pass. He'll be able to pull on away for a little while now, but it's just hard to say. You know, this long run starting to play to Jerry Labonte's, uh, his, his benefit. Uh, you know, as Pucci talked about earlier, when he did a long run, and he's starting to inch away a little bit from Russ and Dale and, and Jeff and these guys. And, you know, it, uh, it took a while, but he's starting to get away. We were talking earlier. Uh, about these Winston Cup drivers and why they are so successful. They spend so much time with their fans and every so often somebody gets it. There, there was a letter in Winston Cup scene, uh, uh, Deborah Franklin, who's down in Georgia. She wrote a note to, to the paper and said, I think all athletes, baseball, basketball, football, any sport should realize it's the fans who have made them what they are. And in no sport, does that statement ring more true than in this sport? You can come up almost any time and you're pretty apt to get an autograph even if it's moments before they're going to go out and do their thing or two hours after they've won this race. At Richmond, we're 336 laps deep. For years, this has been the standard in do-it-yourself books. But now... We've made the best home improvement series even better. Introducing the new Home Repair and Improvement series from Time Life Books. Everything about this new series is designed to help you do your projects faster, easier, better. New color illustrations walk you through every project step by step. New safety tips help you avoid injury. New caution boxes alert you to the most common mistakes. And a new spiral binding lets you lay books flat for easier use. So now you can save money, get professional results, and create the kind of home you've always wanted without paying professional prices. And right now you can get decks, porches, and patios for just $9.99. Discover how easy it is to build a deck from starting the platform to setting the beams to create something your family will enjoy for years. Learn the tricks of the trade for putting in a concrete or brick patio and screening in a porch for cool comfort all summer long. Coming books will show you other projects like how to remodel your kitchen with custom countertops. You can tell at a glance what tools and materials you'll need to install a new bath and do it right the first time. Call now to examine decks, porches, and patios free for 15 days. Keep it for the introductory price of just $9.99. Other volumes will follow, one about every month. Keep only those you want. Cancel any time. The new Home Repair and Improvement Series from Time Life Books. We've made the best even better. Call 1-800-641-8686 now to examine decks, porches, and patios free for 15 days. Keep it for the special price of just $9.99 plus shipping and handling. 
Introducing the all-new Home Repair and Improvement Series from Time Life Books. Call now to order 1-800-641-8686. That's 1-800-641-8686. We're back with you at Richmond, and we are in the window of opportunity for green flag pit stops. Last one, second place car, Rusty Wallace on pit road, Dick Bergman's there. Well, Betty Parrott is out there with a screen cleaning off the front of the radiator, getting rid of the tire debris. They have been working on the tire setup for this last pit constantly since the last time they were into the pit. This is the most critical stop of the day. Rusty does a great stop. 16.81. Good stop for Rusty Wallace on those four tires. These should last him the rest of the race. Mark Martin in sixth position coming on pit road as Wallace comes out. You're riding with Martin as he makes what could be his last stop if it stays green. And Labonte is also coming out of pit road, the leader. He eases down. Randy standing by. Earnhardt is now pitting. Coming in too. Terry Labonte comes to a sliding stop in the Kellogg Chevrolet. Right side tires already going on. Mike Slattery loosening the left side lug nuts. It's a four-tire stop for Terry Labonte. Walter Smith and the Jack goes underneath the left side of the car. A little bit of cue. Jack is up. The brakes are absolutely on fire on the left front of this automobile. Jack is down. Terry's away. Push away. 21-6 on a four-tire chain. Chassis adjustment on car number three as it comes out. Three rounds of wedge into that car number three, and Earnhardt's back out. Here's Gordon coming in. I tell you, Rusty's off the pit stop, uh, and he's about a full straightaway ahead of Jerry Labonte, and more than that ahead of Dale Earnhardt right now. So, you know, with 55 rounds to go, these guys have a hard time catching him under the green. Dick Bergen. Well, the teams were all going to wait until about half. But when Rusty came in, all the rest of them were in, too. Darren Jolly, Mike Crow, John Parker, Andy Papa, and Robert Bresnahan working now. That's the over-the-wall crew on Jeff Gordon's car. Taking the windshield down. 17.3 for Jeff Gordon on that four-tire change. Labonte having trouble. That's who we have. Gant in. Hamilton's in. Coke is in. Leader at the moment is this man, number 17, Waltrip collecting five points. Fords have won 12 of the last 14 races. During that span, the only two wins for Chevrolet, Jeff Gordon. An incredible win at Charlotte. And equally remarkable, Indianapolis. Rickyard 400. Cars on fresh tires beginning to zip through. Hello, there goes Earnhardt, 75, it's been in. Todd Bodine. Waltrip for the moment has the lead. Dave Marcus has just pitted. Dick Trickle has come in. Yeah, I think Dick, Dick Trickle has moved up to second position with the other green flag pit stop, so uh, he's still having a good night. He's at the pits now, giving up that position. So uh, well, I'll tell you though, Rusty's pit stop, I don't know how he did it. But he's a straightaway ahead of everybody now. He wasn't even leading the race before they come in under the green. But, uh, one heck of a pit stop when it really counted. Terry Labonte's just driving the wheel above that thing, trying to get back up there. But, uh, boy, time's not on his side right now. Those parrots, they're wise old birds on pit road. And Buddy Parrot really does a number on putting together a team for the pit road that will effectively get you back in this race. When you give him time on pit road, he'll give it back to you in time. Here's the 10 and the 3. In their scramble. This is for 6th position. 10 has it for the moment. Rudd, here comes Earnhardt, pacing himself and driving. This is lap 350. 50 laps remaining. Waltrip pitting, gives up that lead. Car number 17, the Western Auto car, is in. So that puts Wallace into first. It will move car number five, Labonte, into second. It'll give Gordon third. Check in on your leader here, Rusty Wallace. Leading three 
and one tenth seconds by which Wallace has the advantage. And we'll try to watch him here, Chuck, and see how that car is working compared to how we saw it earlier. Well, it just looked pretty good around turns one and two. Didn't and right it? down on that yellow line. In fact, I think it was under the yellow line a little bit. So uh, it's doing what Rusty wants it to do right now. Three and ten for fourth place. Earnhardt into fourth. Rudd in fifth. One of the competitors can't square for that fourth place battle may not be around much longer. Ricky Rudd reporting on the radio. He's feeling a motor vibration in the tide for That would be a shame indeed with less than 50 laps to go. Uh, it would be a shame indeed. Seventh place in the hopper right now. The 29, Grissom, around the 26. Grissom setting Brett Bodine back another time. What a struggle that's been. They have raced each other all night. The only question is, where's Andretti? He's been right with him most of the night. He must be uh, close one way or the other. Well, he's fallen back a bit. They show him in 10th position now. And he was in 11th. So John's coming back up another time. In fact, John Andretti is, is really doing a good job. And he may be getting the 10 car at this point. He has. Okay, he's in the ninth. Here's Wallace in that lead. We'll check that interval. Remember, we gave it to you as three and one tenths, and I think it's shrinking. It looks like it is. Dick Bergeron down there with Buddy Parrott, the crew chief for Rusty Wallace. Well, Buddy Parrott, after that last round of pit stop, how is your car behaving? And uh, the pit stop was a great pit stop. This is doing a heck of a job. You know, we've been justing on the car all night. There's no genuine grass boys running great. We just like to win the race tonight for the people up there in the box. So, uh, anyway, what else can I say? We're just going to hang on here and see what we can do. Is the steering all right? Well, the steering is still kind of hard, but, you know, it's, it's not working like it should. But Rusty said it'd be okay to finish the race. So, uh, hopefully we can hang on and uh, get a few more points. Two and one ten seconds. Now the interval. It was uh, almost four when he came out. So there's no question that Terry Lamonti is catching up. Rusty Wallace. Is there time? Yep. 359 laps are down. Plenty of time. It's going to be good. It's going to come right down to the end because the harder push Terry pushes that thing, the, the more tire difficulty he might have. But his car's been awful good on long runs, and I'm sure he's pushing it as hard as it'll go. So uh, this is going to keep my attention. There you see the 24 coming through. Now take a look at the, the three car and the 10. Earnhardt coming by. And with him comes Ricky Rudd. That's fourth and fifth. Just a little under two seconds between first and second now as Labonte continues to nip away at Wallace's lead. Now he's significantly faster. You can see a gain of a couple car lengths every lap. Ten car. We mentioned earlier it may be having a problem. Rudd, let's check in and get more on that story. Well, well he definitely is. It's a possible broken valve spring is what they're saying right now. He has had a little trouble getting up off the corner. Chuck, do you think uh, he could nurse it for 38 laps with a valve spring? What, will that, what kind of problem will that pose for the rest of the night? Well, I think basically it'll just uh, cost a little horsepower, but I think it, it should finish the race if it's only a valve spring. It, it'll just cost a little bit of the power, but uh, he should be able to still race Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> Fourth and fifth position right there. It's really not like losing a whole cylinder even. It's just a, a little bit of power loss. So uh, I don't think it'll cause them a lot of problems if that's all it's wrong. He's actually closing a little right there. Which would make you wonder about that free car tonight. The one that really seems strong is Terry Labonte. Yeah. That car pretty much roll it through from the outset and it's cut the lead down to one and a half seconds between first and second good battle here 
fourth at stake. Rusty's starting to catch the lap traffic, traffic too, which is probably going to hold him up just a little bit. I think Terry's going to be there with another lap. Now. They'll catch it in and pass it in or two different times. Terry's awful good. Maybe he can do it. Back up in front. And there you see Terry Labonte closing in again. He's got leg speed and Rick Mast sandwich between him, Labonte, in second, and number two, Wallace, the leader. Wallace almost squaring that corner as he came off that time. Well, Terry is really, his team is really hitting the combination tonight. That car has been just unbelievable all night long. Car 28, Kenny Wallace off the pace, Chuck. Four one and up and down night. Oh, he's going behind the wall. So he'll become the fifth official retiree from the event. Great for him. You don't see that car drop out of very many races. Uh-uh. Labonte is definitely closing down on car number two. Yeah, he can see him right there now. This is lap 368. Average speed for this race stays at 103.092 miles per hour. Five cautions, 35 laps. Kyle Petty was the first out. Jeremy Mayfield crashed later. And there's that interval down to about six tenths. And they're pretty much the same camera frame now. It's uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a dog fight. Jeff Green uh, is out of this race. Jimmy Spencer's retired. Now Kenny Wallace. Well, as fast as Terry has run Rusty down, though, I think Rusty's going to have an awful hard time holding him off with 30 laps to go. He's not quite there, but he's just so close. He can smell him now. <laughs> now, there are 30 laps to go, and he'll use that lap traffic for everything it's worth. The spotters help you with that? Yeah, they do. Uh, they try to, you know, ask him whether they're catching up with it. it means the race and all and you know second place is bringing in your, your dad you'll try to get him to hey tell you got to get out of our, our way we're coming in a hurry we've got some heat from second place but uh sometimes they do and sometimes they don't we'll take a final commercial break here and then be back for the finish of this event as car number five closes in on rusty wallace in the Miller Genuine Draft 400 at Richmond International Raceway before a sellout house of over 72,000. The Diamond Anniversary Ring. Tell her you'd marry her all over again with this masterpiece for only $1,995. As low as $60 a month and pay no money down. There's absolutely no interest if paid within 12 months. Choose one of these anniversary rings from $650 or as low as $20 a month. There's absolutely no interest if paid within nine months. Just you From Shaq to the Dream, the games that took your breath away, the players who made you believe. The NBA's Greatest Games, Mondays at 9 on Sunshine. Well, that's how quickly things change around here. Terry Labonte just motored on by, just like he was driving down the interstate. Waved with Rusty and said bye-bye. No battle at all. Just literally steamed by him on that back straightaway like this. He didn't even have to follow him a lap. Just as quick as he got to him, he had the acceleration coming off the second turn. He just got under him and away he went. Uh, his car is really, really good tonight. Those guys have done their homework. Hardly had time to put the directional signal on and he was fine. <laughs> I'm curious if that's the same car I had at North Wolf Road. An awful strong layer this spring of the long green flag stretches. I wonder if that's the same race car or a new one or a different one. The Labonte is back in front. Wallace is in second. Gordon finds himself third. Earnhardt is fourth. Rudd is in fifth. Martin is sixth. 
And Steve Grissom finds himself seventh with eight currently belonging to Brett Bodine, then Schrader, and rounding out the top ten is John Andretti. And as you ride with Rusty Wallace, he's still got a handful. Works his way through two, and up in four, he's having a lot of fun with that car as well. Take a look at the running order now as you watch Terry Labonte seeking victory here at Richmond this evening. It has been some run for Labonte. He has been strong all night. He has asserted himself, led the most laps. We'll bring you up to date on that as he goes after career win number 12. Wallace, his record's not so bad here. Two wins, two second places coming into the night. So if he stays where he is right now, give him three seconds and two firsts in his last five outings here. You see Bill Elliott's car number 11. He's running in 15th position, being shown a lap down, a couple of laps down. Started last on the field, worked his way up through, got caught early in the pits on a caution, and he's still doing very well with this after that great win at Darlington a week ago. Car number seven is in 18th. That's Jeff Bodine. He had a terrific night going. And from Jeff Bodine's viewpoint, here's Terry Labonte. Trying to put him down another lap. By the way, the, the uh, record for this race, a 104, that's in jeopardy right now. They're averaging 103.561. Whoa! What was all that about on Labonte? I don't know. Uh... He's, he's running hard. He's got it pretty well sold up. I don't think it's big one around. I think that was more Jeff's car. They pulled him around. Uh, and it was uh, Terry's car. I'm not really sure. Watch it again. There he goes. Now he goes down to the inside and gets under Jeff. Off two. Having trouble getting by for a moment, then easily makes the mark going into three. pan back and show you the other ones and you can get a sense of the interval here as we get down towards show and tell time at 385. There's Wallace in second place. Rusty just kind of watching Terry pull off away. I mean, he had a great pit stop and had a full straightaway on him there for a minute, but uh, Terry was just too strong. Here's Jeff Gordon, and he's in third. He's been up there all night. Just not quite a contender for the win, but uh, Boy, real close, real yeah. strong. Loy Allen pitting there as he came by him. And here comes fourth place. There's number three, Earnhardt, coming by. And the 10 car will be coming up fifth. He's still looking at it. Uh, he's only got about 15 laps left to do it. Mark Martin is in sixth. And Steve Grissom stays seventh. Brett Bodine in eighth. Schrader is ninth. And in tenth is Andretti. Andretti there. Looking for Schrader at the present time. See if he can run it. And, and Andretti has kept that 43 car up in this lead lap all night. And it's been a long time since you've seen those cars doing that well this late in the game. This is going to be his best Worcester Cup finish uh, tonight, it looks like. And if they can just uh, hang on here for the last few laps. Todd Bodine's number 75 had some problems early, and NASCAR took away a lap from him, but he's still running 21st on the field. You see Todd going through there right behind John Andretti. car just scooted by Rusty Wallace coming down the uh, main straightaway here. Bill Elliott, that 15th place car, and it looks to me like number two is not running as well as it did earlier. Not at all. Huh? I think with the in-car in uh, shot there, I saw a little smoke in the inside of the cockpit there. Maybe it's something to do with that steering problem or something, I'm not sure. It looks like he's just going to try to nurse it home, but he's going to lose some positions. It's going to cost him. Jeff Force Gordon going on by. Now he's got to worry about Dale Earnhardt catching him. There's nine laps to go. And if he uh, drops off the pace like he is, he, he may be in jeopardy of a top five even. Gordon for second. Wallace, number two, falls to third. 
Earnhardt moving in on it. That's frustrating. Run that hard all night. 390 laps, and now it starts to uh, cause a problem. Dick Bergman. Buddy Parrott, the car's dropping back. What's wrong? I don't know. Uh, maybe a broken valve spring or something. Uh, and, uh, we're just trying to get the thing to finish the race, and uh, Rusty drove a great race. And it was a lot of fun tonight. Terry, Lamani, uh, my hat's off that crew. They did a great job. Car ran great. And, uh, anyway, we had a great night. And, uh, just want to come back to uh, Dover and do what we did last night. And when they asked on the radio if he could finish, Rusty said, I don't know. He saw some smoke that last lap as he went down into turn number one. Big plume coming out of the back of that car, and he is really trying to nurse this one home, trying to coddle the number two into any kind of a finish. 393 complete. It's time by. Lots more smoke. Yeah, right now he's in a situation where uh, how bad do you want to finish the race? If you try to push that throttle down to the floor on those straightaways, probably not going to make it. It's very few laps left, but it, it's going in a hurry, whatever's going. It's going it's going pretty good. Hey, welcome to the old days. 43 and 17, folks. They're going at it for 10th spot. This time it's John Andretti for the Petty Colors and Noel D.W. This is for 10th. Darrell tries to nose down to the bottom under John. Gets him a little high. Here they are at the line, and it's going to be Daryl Waltrip up there. Now John Andretti comes right back after him. Daryl has it for the moment. Turn two. Waltrip has the spot down the backstretch. John Andretti fights his way right back on the outside. What a great track Richmond is. You want to see him run side by side. This is the place, as Brigham said. Four to go. Cleared him yet, Jones? Uh -huh. There he goes. There he goes. He's got it. That crafty old experience has paid off. <laughs> yeah, that crafty old DW. <laughs> Tenth place. Wait for the leader right here. Take a look for your favorites here as we get down to the end of this one. And the favorite tonight looks to be Terry Lavati. I guess he ate his breakfast cereal this morning. <laughs> what a show he's put on. And a lap and a half to go, it looks like Dale's going to ah. go by too. Looks like Dale's going to beat, gonna beat Rusty. Rusty didn't need that in his championship hunt, but uh, I don't think he can stop it. That's back for third. Talked about at the outset of tonight's race, Rusty Wallace trying to nurse it home. White flag is out around the track. And Wallace loses another spot going into the corner. Checkers about to fall. And the 12th career win is about to be recorded by Terry Lavati for Rick Hendricks. It'll be Gordon in second. And we'll see the three come across just in front. Earnhardt just in front of Rusty Wallace in third and fourth. So Chevrolet has won only three of the last 15 races. Hendrick Motorsports cars have won all three of those. Jeff Gordon with two, and now tonight, number five, Terry Labonte, wins here at Richmond International Raceway for that great team from Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll meet the winner in a moment down in Victory Lane, Terry Labonte. the meaty meatball pizza a whole new reason to fall in love with pizza hut it's a meatball extravaganza loaded with italian sausage pepperoni and two layers of cheese a medium's only $8.99 and a second medium pizza is just five dollars more try the meaty meatball pizza because when something's this good you're gonna fall head over heels i really didn't want my husband to color his gray hair but then i discovered this the hair coloring called just for men and now he looks better than ever 
Simply apply just for men and in five minutes rinse. Just for men blends away the gray for a totally natural look. No wonder eight out of ten women prefer the just for men look to the gray look. It's like you took off ten years. And in just five minutes. Just for men, she'll love the way you look. Hi folks, I'm Channel 9's Pat Clark. And I'm Paul Azinger, asking you to join us September 19th at Lake Nona for Guest Watch's Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. You'll get a chance to rub elbows with guys like Paul, Jack Nicholas, Payne Stewart, Nick Price, and many other world-class pros. And we're playing for more than just the lowest score. We're raising money for Leukemia Society Lymphoma Research Program. So join us here at Lake Nona on September 19th for the Zinger Stinger Pro-Am. Where else can you see guys like this doing what they do best and help lymphoma research? Call Ticketmaster at 407-839-3900. Terry Labonte about to clamber out of car number five after his 12th career win comes at Richmond International Raceway in an outstanding performance. Let's get out to Randy with our champion tonight. Terry Labonte taking a breath. Congratulations, your 12th career win. Uh, it's been a long time since you had a car that could dominate a race like that. You had a great, great car tonight. I tell you, we really did. We were fast off the truck, fast every practice period. I didn't think it was this good, though. I, I knew the two car was going to be tough, and the six car was tough, and the three car. And I'll tell you, we were really fortunate. The Hendrick team did great tonight, first and second. Uh, Gary Dehart and all the guys did a great job. I want to dedicate this to our friend Ernie Irvin. I hope he's watching us. Uh, we miss him, wish him well, and hope he's back as soon as possible. Terry, how concerned were you uh, getting beat out of the pits the last stop? Rusty had a huge lead on you. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how fast their pit stop was. Ours are good, and they had a great one. I was concerned. I said, man, I don't know if I can run him down or not. His car looked a little bit too loose, though, and then that hurt him in traffic, and uh, that's when I made up all my time. What do you mean driving a Ferrari? You came over the radio and you said you wanted to drive a Ferrari. I think you should give it to you, Rick. Rick, give him a Ferrari. <laughs> Rick Hendrick, car owner, of course. I, I kind of set him up on that. I waited until the white flag will happen. <laughs> uh, he wants the use of Rick's Ferrari for a week. Uh, let's, go to Dick, let's go to Dick Bergen, who's with Rusty Wallace. Tough break for Rusty tonight. Well, Rusty Earnhardt just came by and accused you of smoking him out. What happened to this thing? I lost the motor with like 10 or about 15 laps ago, I guess. I noticed it was starting smelling real bad. And so I don't know if we lost a piston or uh, or what was going on, but it had a really good horsepower all night long. And then right there at the end, something happened. You know, we, we did all our practicing and we raced the same engine. And I don't know, maybe we shouldn't have done that, but we've always done it in the past since work. But get a little too many miles on the motors that way. But uh, yeah, we just lost a piston or something, but the car handled good. Uh, Terry was just beat better than I was. You know, I had a strong second place car, had a killer pit stop right there at the end. It got me up in a big lead, but, uh, you know, I just couldn't roll through the center as fast as I needed to. And, uh, like I say, everything was fine. I just got beat tonight. And then right there at the end, we, I just milked the engine trying not to blow it up. And that's the reason I had to let the three car by right there to lap to go, because I didn't want to have a DNF. And he did a good job. He did finish in the top five. Averaged 104.039 miles per hour to win here tonight. That was uh, Terry Labonte finishing in second, Gordon. Earnhardt third, Wallace fourth, Rudd fifth, and Martin sixth. More in a moment. All my life I've dreamt about coming to Nepal and seeing see the mountains and the people. T-Puff, the engine treatment with DuPont Teflon protects the heart and soul of your car. The engine, without T-Puff, your engine faces a daily grind of dry start, stop and go driving, freezing winds and scorching heat. It's inhuman. But add T-Plus one time and your engine becomes a smooth running all with a power machine protected for up to 50,000 miles. So, beat the daily grind, add T-Plus. The T is for Teflon. The new Volkswagen Jetta GLX was built for the Audubon, where people go 130 miles an hour. You, however, cannot. If you could, it would look a lot like this. And a little like this. Oh, so it's my fault. I didn't say that. Well, then what do you say? You don't listen. You never change. The new Volkswagen Jetta has an adaptive automatic transmission. It senses the way you drive and adjusts to fit your personality. Maybe you are. Maybe I'm not. It's a shame we only make cars.
Your genuine draft Rusty Wallace stock car. See it. Hear it. Welcome back to Richmond. Evening's competition over the Miller Genuine Draft 400 in the books tonight on TBS. Barry Labonte, the winner over Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace soldiering on to finish fourth. And Rudd and Mark Martin back here at the STP Pit Communication Center. A couple of pieces of business we need to wrap up for you tonight. The Advanced Auto Parts Pits Done Quickly Award to the two car. Buddy Parrott, the crew chief. Rusty Wallace's crew got him out of the pits consistently inside 16 seconds tonight. Gave him the lead with less than 80 laps to go tonight. He couldn't hold on, but certainly they win the award tonight. And Advance Auto makes a donation on behalf of the Miller Genuine Draft Team and TBS Sports to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. The liquid wrench slickest move of the night had to be Terry Labonte's slick pass of Rusty Wallace with just a handful of laps to go, as we showed you. He came inside of Rusty's car. Terry did coming off the second quarter. Breezed by and eased on to victory tonight. Uh, a good night for that team. Not only the victory and the slickest move award. Gary Dehart wins the Mechanic of the Race Award tonight as well. We also want to share with you uh, the winners of the UAW GM Teamwork of Excellence Award. That's an award we talked about at the top of our broadcast tonight. The Diamond Ridge Motorsports team. The Gary Bechtel team. Steve Grissom is the driver of the 29 car. They win the UAW GM Teamwork of Excellence Award tonight. UAW and GM teaming up to honor the team that exhibits the most teamwork during the event. They won a $5,000 prize tonight, and they're eligible for a $50,000 year-end award. Ken Squire? Thank you, Rick Benjamin. Taking a look at the final standings tonight, Chevrolet came out with a vengeance. Labonte, Gordon, Earnhardt, as we review the top uh, standings tonight. Hey, we had another sort of unusual record as you look at the uh, top drivers this evening. We didn't expect it, but this has been a two-day event. We started on Saturday, we concluded on Sunday, Chuck. This has become the first two-day Winston Cup race <laughs> since we were out of Riverside, California in 1980. When we started on Sunday, January 13th, and concluded on Saturday, January 19th. Now there's a mark for you. What do you think of the night's race? I didn't realize it was that late. <laughs> I thought it was a great show all the way. I really did. My hat's off to the Terry Labonte team. Uh, they did their homework to beat that two car and outrun it there at the end. And, and uh, you know, they had a great day. And I think Rick Hendricks probably one happy man with first and second. I think his third car was in the top ten as well. So a uh, good day for the Rick Hendrick teams. 104.039 was the average speed, just under the 104.661, which was Wallace's record and still far away from Davey Allison's mark of uh, 107, fastest that's ever been turned on this track for the 400 lap distance. There are the points now, and Earnhardt leads Wallace by 232 as they head off to Dover, Delaware, Martinsville, North Wilkesboro, and on to Charlotte, North Carolina, when we'll be with you next at October 9th. Thanks so much for being with us this evening, Chuck Bound. Now let's go back to the STP Pit Center and Rick Benjamin. Thanks, Ken Squire. Chuck Bound, great call of tonight's action here at Richmond International Raceway. The Miller Genuine Draft 400 into the books tonight. Our congratulations to Terry Labonte. A reminder, we'll be back with you on TBS four weeks from this weekend, in fact, at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Bush Grand National Action on Saturday, Sunday, October the 9th at 1 o'clock Eastern on TBS. Our coverage of the Mellow Yellow 500 from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage here tonight. For all of us at TBS Sports, we'll see you in a month at Charlotte. Thanks for watching. than a win.